just blanked the bed to play. Mm, Looked like they oh. wanted to play the Leafs. I've never rooted for the Leafs so hard. I, I want them to take Boston down so badly. Yeah, go Leafs. They scored one goal in their last two games. Right. Are we live yet? We are. Okay. Well, I guess this <laughs> this, isn't, this isn't something that can't go on the live, but just to <laughs> tell you guys this quick little story. So <laughs> Felipe texted me yesterday. He says, sir, play in action and a home-cooked meal for me and Sophie at my house. That is my offer. I said, absolutely. He says, hell yeah. Then an hour later, he says, Sophie forgot she had plans tonight with her friend. So it's just you and me tonight, minus the home cooked meal. <laughs> I said, <laughs> I said, no worries unless you want to re rack for tomorrow. But it's a big heat game, so I'm sure you got plans. He says, let's re rack for tomorrow. I've got my friend coming over who's a Philly fan. So that's perfect. So I, was, I mean, that's, I'm glad you brought him up because Trent was pulling Felipe hours this morning. He showed up at about 5 48. Oh yeah. I, Oh, wow. This is the latest I've ever been here. I got here at 545. I got here late. I was here late. And I walk morning. in, there's no car. I says, whoa. Trent watched the second play-in game. Oh, I did. I was here late. Felipe got a job, you know. He's leaving. Is he? He's going to Miami. I figured as much. Oh. It's about time. Oh, whatever. They they blew their chances. It was fun. It was fun watching the last few games. Only consolation, Mark. You won the Flyers prop bet. I know. <laughs> That's right. I forgot you placed that. I think that puts us back. We're back to minus 20 on the year. Minus twenty with another with a, another wager out there on the Reds. Oh, okay. Well, we got a ways to go on that one. I know, but I, my goal is to not have to redeposit until after baseball season. The, the, I know. the whole goal is to not have to redeposit. Yeah, totally. What did we throw in an original hundred? Fifty. We're live in three, two, one. You are listening to Miller and Moulton exclusively on the Florida Sports Network. And now here's Mark Miller and David Moulton. Top of the morning to you. If you're into hoops and hockey, what a great week it has been. Eight days away from the NFL draft. Are you Miller and Moulton? Miller and Moulton.com, Miller underscore Moulton on X. And well, it's the playoffs are underway in one sport. They might as well be underway in another. And it's already taking a toll on the Miller and Moulton show. Man, we barely got on the air. And come on, guys, we got a two months ahead of us, eight, nine weeks. Hoops and hockey. Late into the night. Come on, boys. You got to get it together now. I feel like I'm being chastised by my father for showing up a little late this morning. He rolls out of bed, hits a button, and he's ready to go to work, whereas the rest of us, you know, might have to do a couple of things before we get here. Right. You've got a whole half a mile. You've got to travel. <laughs> you contemplate doing it by golf cart every morning. You're so far away from the studio. It's but... a grind, David. It's a grind. <laughs> uh, but Trent, I, I mean, listen, he had a, a medical excuse for one day. He had a travel excuse for another. Uh, let me tell you there, big fella. Uh, it would have been no excuse today. You cannot miss the start of the show because the Kings Warriors second play in game. You got you got a tough eight weeks ahead of you with these nightcaps. I'm not denying that. You guys 100 percent have place to say, Trent, get here earlier. <laughs> but last night was fun. Let me say that. Started with a little LeBron win. 
I got to tell you, can we start with that, by the way? And I, I, I may really end up having to put my foot in my mouth by saying this, but three minutes left in the game. Uh-huh. The guy's gone for 40 for one team. And he right. comes down and he's hopping on his leg and he leaves. Never to, I mean, I, if there's something really wrong, then I'm in the wrong here. If there's something, and I know they're going to do exams. MRI, on that leg, right. I, but, and I'm not even doing a hockey to basketball. I don't think LeBron comes out. If he tweaks his leg with three minutes left in a two point game. And Zion couldn't get to the locker room fast enough. Now, maybe he was really, that was just, that was mind boggling to me to see a guy to be able to run off his, with his own power off of the court and leave the game. He put 40 up. He did. He was clearly the dominant player on the floor too. And they came from 15, 17 yeah. down in the second half and they had it tied and yeah. And those who were on site also said that after the game, he was walking around. He didn't have the leg wrapped in any way. Uh, but, I mean, the Pelicans are concerned because he's clearly their best player. But, yeah, LeBron and the Lakers, they do not mail one in. There was thought that Anthony Davis with his back might not play. LeBron's got a troublesome ankle. He can always sit out with that ankle. And instead, the two guys combined to play 80 minutes. And David, might I add, Anthony Davis might not play, quote unquote, ends up with 20 points, 15 rebounds. Right. Yep. And so I just found that. I, did you did you not find that? Well, I just assumed, wow, he's really hurt because otherwise, wow, coming out in a tie game with three minutes to go. And I mean, your season's not on the line, but it's close. It's close. You lose, then your season is on the line. I mean, you know, you're you're hanging, you know, you're getting close to the precipice. You know, you can start to see over the cliff from where you are. So I just assumed, wow. Because uh, I was watching it live. I, that was on one. At that point, Caps Flyers was over. I was double hockey all night long. Caps Flyers was over. I switch over to the play-in game. There's about five minutes left, and it's a tight game. I'd been following it on my phone. And as you mentioned, Lakers had a big lead. He makes a, what looked like a pretty innocent drive to the rack and comes down and hopped and had his, you know, put his jersey up in his, put his face in his jersey and walked off under his own power. I mean, had a little limp, but that, that was just really strange to me. So Lakers and Kings win the play-in game. Sacramento dominated Golden State, and for as terrific as Klay Thompson had been the final four-plus weeks of the season, in what could be his last game as a Warrior, he goes over. Literally, over. Didn't make a shot from the field, didn't attempt a free throw. Zero points for Klay Thompson. Sports can be cruel. And I think we can put the Warriors dynasty to bed, right? That it ended. It, yeah. It, oh, I mean, you know, listen. I mean, Golden State had a run here late in the season where they came with a different lineup, and it was like, ooh, you know, maybe the Warriors, you know, you get the right matchups. I mean, there are a lot of people that think if you can match up with OKC or Minnesota, then that'll get you through the first round, and then you see where things fall. You know, Dallas is small. Phoenix is small. You know, they're obviously talented. You know, Clippers, you never know if Kawhi and Paul George are going to play, and everybody's trying to avoid the Nuggets. It's in that way. I mean, they're better than the teams in the East, but the East is the same way. You're trying to avoid the Celtics. Everybody else has issues. So They just have more issues in the East than they do in the West. Exactly. But hockey was amazing last night. The last two nights... Maybe the best two nights of regular season hockey that I can recall in terms of playoff implications back to back. Cannot recall watching not just my team, but I'm talking about four to six games throughout the league, seemingly all going on at the same time. It did have that uh, World Cup soccer vibe to it for, yes. regular, you know, with game, simultaneous games going on that impact one another and how things are going to go. Uh, 
as a Red Wing fan, the last two nights have been glorious. Even though the Red Wings ended up not getting into the postseason, coming from a two-goal deficit on back-to-back nights to have a shot at the playoffs, to last night's score with three seconds left to force overtime. Uh, heady stuff. Yes. And, uh, and as it turned out that in another game, a team desperately needing a win pulls its goal net goal, and they pulled their goalie because when they looked at the scoreboard, everything was falling their way. In theory, if the scoreboard didn't look the way it did, they wouldn't have pulled their goalie. Your goal, Mark, the Wings' goal, happened 30 seconds too late in real time. Tortorella looks up at the board, sees Detroit losing, knows it's late third. That's exactly what the Flyers needed to happen. So he's like, we score a goal, we could go to the playoffs here. This is perfect. All right. And uh, literally, Washington scores the empty net goal. And just about by the time they line up for the faceoff after the goal, the Wings goal appears on the board. And I don't think Tortorella pulls the goalie if it's 4 4 going to overtime because he knows at that point they've been eliminated. And Tortorella knows that the outcome of that game's his game is also going to affect the Wings and the Penguins. I don't think he pulls his goalie if your tying goal had appeared on the scoreboard. Interesting. And all of that because there was a goal disallowed by the Flyers scored a goal earlier in the game that was disallowed and there was a lengthy review. So the Flyers game ended up being about three minutes of game time behind the Red Wing game. Exactly. Exactly. An inadvertent whistle by the referee disallowed a goal and could be the difference between one team making the playoffs and any one of three other teams making the playoffs. So a remarkable couple nights in hockey. Uh, And just kind of curious whether or not 21,000 on the text line, Twitch chat room, you know, do you like the play-in in the NBA? Do you like it? Does it work for you? The single game elimination, this has a baseball wild card game feel to it, doesn't it, Mark? I, you know, and I didn't like the idea of it at first. I don't like the participation trophy element of what we're getting into sports, of how many teams are being added to the playoffs. But the first round of the NBA is not that exciting to me. The play-in, with the implications of obviously losing you can be done, has some juice to it. And I found myself... And it was late, but I found myself all into the Lakers game. And if it wasn't for a 430 wake-up call, probably would have watched a little more of the Kings-Warriors last night. I just don't have the same association bug that Trent has to stay up till 1230 at night. And by the way, I'm paying the price. I am struggling this morning. I'm not going to lie. Well, I have to admit, and and, you're, you're doing fine work. And you got a lot going for you, but you have not worked the nap into your routine. If Felipe had this same problem, I think it's a young person's thing that you're like, oh man, if I'm taking a nap in the middle of the day, that just indicates I'm old. No, you're tired. No, it indicates you're a professional. Right. It's what it actually indicates because the pro athlete lives by the nap. Yes. Lives by it. Yes. It doesn't doesn't matter the sport. It, It really does not matter the sport. Now, the only one I don't know about is baseball. But the, the right, hockey they play player, at one o'clock. Right. But but they, when they play a night game, I don't know if they take a nap during the day. I don't know if yeah, they I do. don't think they do. You what I know of baseball players is they stay out till three or four, they sleep till eleven or noon. Then they go to the ballpark for three to beat the traffic. Also, that's why a lot of times why they get there an hour earlier at least than they need to be. You know, get to the clubhouse, see the guys beat the traffic. Whereas hockey and basketball, they have a shoot around or a pregame skate. They come back, eat, and sleep. Uh, I mean, Trent, the one to three, two to four nap. I, I mean, it's just, it's a staple of many a professional sports league. It's okay to work it into your system. You just tell your f- friends and family, hey, man, I'm an athlete. I'm in training. David, I, I hope I meet her someday. I really do. The one to three sports nap. <laughs> Yes. Okay. I mean, you know, I hate to tell you, she she's from Appleton, Wisconsin. Okay, you're and she's wearing a Packers jersey. But she, I'm telling you, best looking 
young lady you've ever seen. And not only that, the pillow is always cool early afternoon. <laughs> always. It's where Stuart Scott got his slogan. They're going to do a 30 for 30 on Stu. All right. Yeah. Okay. Just saw that the other day. Since we went as cool as the other side of the pillow, I just thought I'd throw that in there. Miller and Moulton. Uh, good show lined up. Talk a little uh, NFL draft, a little more than an hour. It's a hump day, so Seth will join us. And uh, Mark Lye, he was scheduled to join us anyway on this day and time. And then he decided to make some news before his appearance. So we'll, we'll talk to Mark coming up in a couple hours. I'm Miller and Moulton. Mark Miller for Molly Maid. Why Molly Maid, you ask? Trust. Moulton was a customer for 15 years. Affordability. Didn't I just say Moulton was a customer for 15 years? Worry-free services. Our professional house cleaners are fully insured and a 24-hour warranty. Call Molly Maids today at 239-774-5839. That's 239-774-5839 or online at mollymade.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. That's mollymade.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. The law firm of Michael F. Hornung has successfully represented the citizens of Southwest Florida for over 30 years. As a former prosecutor, the information I know is information you need to know. If you've been arrested for a DUI, a criminal matter, or involved in an auto accident, call the law firm of Michael F. Hornung. I'm a local attorney with local knowledge to assist you through the process. For a free consultation, call 239-437-0095. That's 239-437-0095. Offices in Florida. Visit Jason and Todd. At the Diamond District. Hi, I'm Jason. And I'm Todd with the Diamond District. I believe in complete transparency. If you're shopping for diamonds in Naples, you're paying too much. If you're shopping in the Cape or Fort Myers, you also won't see the selection you deserve to have. If you're online, there's no human connection, and you won't know if your diamond is beautiful or not until it shows up in the mail. Just because it's GIA certified doesn't mean it's brilliant. There's so much more to a diamond than its cut, color, and clarity that makes it beautiful. Visit us at the Diamond District for a non-commissioned and educational presentation and quit paying more in Naples or buying blind from the internet. The Diamond District has the rarest diamonds from half carat to 10 carats. You won't find a bigger selection or better value. And you won't find a better buying experience. Jason and I are in the store nearly every day and we look forward to shaking your hand and welcoming you to our Diamond District family. At the Diamond District. Listening to Miller and Moulton on the Florida Sports Network. Look at Mac joining us again. I, we'd say top of the morning to you, Mac, but it's three fifteen in the afternoon where you are. Um, what did Mark Lai do? Uh, so he's on the Dan Dockich show, and Dockich. Uh, brings up the steroid rumors about Tiger and Mark Lai goes, oh yeah, 90% of us think he did droids. <laughs> okay. Wow. Yeah, I always thought he did. Really? Yeah. I the, I, was the, I will say I, the rumors I'm were not in the golf world. I was told by numerous people that he did. Yeah, the rumors not, nobody that I know in the golf world. Um so did you see Max post the international ice hockey tournaments being held in yes, Turkmenistan? I... Mac, the reason why it's not a surprise to Miller and Moulton is this. A longtime listener of the show in our first act sent us, were they the camels? The Dubai camels. The Dubai camels. He sent us each jerseys. From the hockey team in Dubai. We did a remote during the NBA Eastern Conference Finals in 2012. It was the last great series between the Celtics Big Three and the Heat Big Three. And (laughs) we're doing a live remote. It's around Memorial Day. (laughs) We're both outdoors in (laughs) Camel's hockey jerseys. (laughs) People were like, what the hell are those? We're like, yeah, you guys haven't seen these at a Blades uh, jersey auction, have you?
Mac, have a cold one. Do we have any ideas for a poll question? Because yesterday we teased it, teased it, teased it. And never had one, right. <laughs> um, so, I, I say... Right. <laughs> I swear to God, if he was going to start telling a story that wasn't about the poll question right there, I was going to put my head through the screen. No, I was going to say, what's your thought on naps? Okay. Got to remember, most of our audience works nine to five, so. I'm fine with the nap. I understand. I mean, Mac made a good point that uh, Trump obviously believes in him because he's taken a couple the last two days on trial. Hello. What do you mean Twitch gone, Johnny? Yeah, some people, I guess, are having trouble with Twitch this morning. Okay, well, go to YouTube. It ain't on our end. No. Also, EB, lighten up a little bit on the NBA. Come on. Come on. No, no they're... That was good basketball last night. Uh, but there are people that are just... Good point, unreal. Paul. All right, so there you go, guys. For those having trouble, just restart the app. It works fine. So, Or, like Mark said, find us on YouTube. Don't touch that dial. We don't want to lose you. No, Wes, there's no doubt about it. Two guys running look like they'd be champion nappers. 160 years old between the two of them. It's unbelievably gross. It's A tremendous indictment of where we are. It's a tre tremendous indictment of Gen X, who has no desire to do it. Our generation has no desire to do a damn thing. Just sit on the sidelines and bitch. It's what we do. Yep. You think your generation's bad? Well, I know yours is. It's it's awful. Oh, that's because people are convinced that uh, they've lost the power. the The fix is in. Uh, between the politicians and the corporations, and we've given up. We're just trying to survive. We don't think we can change anything anymore. Right. Because we can't. It's funny, Kilo's dad. I actually have more faith in Trent's generation than I do ours. Do you really? Yeah, because I sense there's going to be real anger in your generation. Okay, as time goes on, I because, might have you, because our our generation is barely, but we're, we're going to be able to financially get to the finish line. You're listening to Miller and Moulton, only on the Florida Sports Network. 21 minutes past the hour. Top of the morning to you. How the heck are you? Miller and Moulton, millerandmoulton.com, Miller underscore Moulton on X. By the way, the show is expanding. The part arrived in the mail in Huntsville. So apparently we're going to be on in Huntsville, Alabama next week. Sounds great to me. The same part has yet to arrive to its destination in Jacksonville. Once it does, we will be on in Jacksonville. They hope it is also next week. They sending that part to your front porch, David? <laughs> I told them to. I said I could deliver it by hand. I mean, I know right where the building it has to go to is and everything. Be right next to his DoorDash. <laughs> Listen, uh, you know, might have to do a little DoorDash or a little Uber the way things are going. So I had a calamity yesterday. My garage door, the spring broke. So Oh, that's right. So I had to spend the day waiting for the garage door people to come fix it and spend way too much money to get the garage door fixed. But he didn't have a part. And the instead of sending someone else from the company with the part, they got an Uber to deliver the part to my house, which I thought was a pretty good delivery service. A lot cheaper than a courier. Just call an Uber. Bring this over to his house. Well, it's cheaper, but it's also kind of ridiculous. Shows you that we're in the year 2024. Yeah, just call an Uber. Let's Uber over the part. 
instead of having the company actually fix the problem. But wait, the real question, does your garage door open? It opens. Shut? There the go. wife's happy. I spent way too much money, probably got overcharged, but all all said and done, we're, we're good. Hey, whatever you have to spend for a happy wife, it's money well spent, right? You got it. You know, we did kind of bury the lead, David, as we talked about all the great hockey and all the things going on. We got a Florida battle. The Battle of Florida Part 2 is going to happen because the Bruins decided that they didn't want to play hockey the last couple games of the season. Woo wee. They scored one goal in their last two games. All right. You know, they lost at Washington. Caps had everything to play for. Okay. That happens. Although they only had 16 shots on goal. What kind of an effort is that? But, you know, they came home to play Ottawa. Right. I, Ottawa's not any good. You're correct, David. Night before, Ottawa got beat 4 nothing by the Rangers. So, I mean, come on now. Bada bing, bada boom, you beat the Senators, you win the division, you're the two seed. Well, I, I guess the Bruins, Mark, wanted no part of the Lightning. Nobody, they, they treated the Lightning like they were the Denver Nuggets. They're like, no, 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 no don't want to play them. No, no mm -mm, anybody but them. No, Maple Leafs? Yep, fine, done. Sign, sign us up. We'll play the Leafs. Lightning? Oh, no. Mm -mm. No. Point? Stamkos, Kucherov, Vasilevsky, Hedman, no part of that. Mm -mm, nope. Austin Matthews, whatever. 69 goals. Yeah, yeah, please. They're the Leafs. They fall apart in the spring. Okay. Leaves hit the ground early in Toronto. Come on, let's go. Yeah, what a collapse for the Bruins this week. Unbelievable, and it sets up a battle of Florida. The Tampa Bay Lightning and the Florida Panthers are going to get it on in the postseason. Is this third time in four years? Yep. Third time in four years after they had never met in the playoffs before, right? And what's interesting is the first two times they met, okay, Tampa Bay won a bowl. And so now here's Florida, division champs. Same role that we've had here recently. Florida actually goes into the series with home ice. And yet everybody's going, yeah, that's cute. But they're the lightning in the spring. And I know you guys had a fun run last year. That's because you didn't play the lightning. Well, what I am, the other little sidebar I'm interested in this is that the Panthers struggled to draw fans. They, they, they're they better this year than they were the year before, and they're better than they were two years ago. I get it. Still not a overly difficult ticket to get. They've had to put systems in place to try to keep the opposition fan out of their building. Right. What are they going to do now? <laughs> I wanna, and the, but the other side of it is the, the Lightning, who have a great fan base. They going to travel across the state? They going to make the two and a half, three hour trek for road games? Are we going to see a 70 30 Panther to Lightning crowd? Because this isn't just the displaced Boston fan that lives on the East Coast of Florida, if you know what I mean. This actually is, you have to travel to go to this. So there's a lot with this series I'm fired up to see. I don't think in the first two games, the Lightning are going to be that well represented because nobody thought these two teams would be playing. And you're going to have, what, three days to buy tickets and make your travel plans and, and all that. I mean, I actually think Lightning fans were making their plans to go to Boston. Because this was done. I mean, the Panthers had their slump a couple of weeks ago. The Bruins pulled four-plus points ahead of them. The Bruins and the Panthers actually played a showdown game in Boston like 10 days ago. Bruins won in overtime, and the thought was, well, that's it. Bruins won the division. So, Mark, I think Lightning fans are going to sit the first two games out. They're just going to watch them at home. Then games five and seven, that's a different story. Depending on the days of the week, the games fall on and all that. Eh, they might represent. By the little Panthers lightning. Yeah. First round series should be terrific.
awesome. Should be awesome with all the pressure on the Panthers. All of it. Should be fun. Will be physical. And that's where Florida has the advantage in the series. I mean, they're going to they're going to try to run Tampa out of the rink on a nightly basis. But they tried that three years ago, and they ran all over the ice, and the Lightning took the hits and counterattacked and swept them right out of the playoffs. And Barovsky's had a great year, but it's the spring, and he's not the best goalie on the ice. No, he is not. So it should be fun. Good stuff. Good stuff. And all I'm hoping for in the NBA over the next 48 hours, I just want the two teams playing tonight in Philly to both advance. That's all. You know, the winner tonight obviously will. They'll play the Knicks. I want the loser tonight to make sure they advance so they play the Celtics. And I'd like Philadelphia to win tonight because I'd like to see the Heat play the Celtics in round one. <laughs> Just I sorry. <laughs> not a not I mean I, you know I want the, I want the Heat to make the playoffs. I'm not rooting against the Heat. I just want to see the Heat play the Celtics in the first round. You know, because I want me, Boston to have to really work all the way through this. I don't think you're alone. Something tells me you're not alone. Well, what what I really want to happen, because we're all gonna pick the Celtics, no matter who they play in the first round. But wouldn't you just you want to throw a little money down and say, listen, hey, sports gods, if you could arrange this, have the Sixers win tonight, have the Heat win Friday, and then have the Heat steal game one in Boston. And let's just see how much everybody freaks out, including the Celtics. Just have Jimmy Butler walk off the court in a very silent arena, okay, just making his gestures and pointing to people kind of like – Told you we were going to come here and do this. You, right. You guys, little, little 26 point first game, maybe with yep. 14 in the fourth quarter type of Jimmy Butler. Totally. Night, you know what I mean? Right. He come from five down, going to the fourth to win, walk off the court, look around like, you didn't think this was going to happen? You really thought things were going to be different? Final score 98, 97, something like that to really honk off the Celtics. Exactly. Jason Tatum, nine of 29 from the field. Right. Mm -hmm. That's all. Then whatever happens after that, I think we're fine with. The starting five is next. Located on the East Trail, locally owned Naples Tiki Bar and Grill is an outdoor eatery next to the Hitching Post Shopping Center. Island-inspired food with a true tiki theme. The best place in Naples to enjoy the beautiful weather in Southwest Florida. The Naples Tiki Bar and Grill offers a great menu for dine-in or takeout. Enjoy our famous pulled pork, huge burgers, and tiki bar cocktails. Don't miss happy hour every day from 3 to 6 and live music seven days a week. See you soon at the Naples Tiki Bar and Grill, 11498 Tamiami Trail East. Mark Miller for Molly May. Why Molly May, do you ask? Trust. Molten was a customer for 15 years. Affordability. Didn't I just say Molten was a customer for 15 years? Worry-free services. Our professional house cleaners are fully insured and a 24-hour warranty. Call Molly Maids today at 239-774-5839. That's 239-774-5839 or online at mollymade.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. That's mollymade.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. Visit Jason and Todd at the Diamond District. If you're in love and thinking about a diamond, you'll want to hear from my friends Jason and Todd at the Diamond District. When purchasing a diamond, you deserve a relaxed, stress-free, and educational experience. You want to have a good time and feel comfortable. You want selection, quality, and value. At the Diamond District, you'll get it all. With our team of non-commissioned diamond advisors, no one's in a rush. We care only about you and making sure your needs and wishes are fulfilled. You'll be wowed by our selection of GIA certified diamonds, stunning diamond bracelets, earrings, pre-owned Rolex watches, exotic ruby, sapphire, emerald, and tanzanite jewelry. There's something for everyone at the Diamond District and all at the lowest prices anywhere. Jason and I love what we do and are in the store nearly every day. We look forward to shaking your hand and welcoming you to our Diamond District family. Visit Jason and Todd at the Diamond District. You are listening to Miller and Moore on the Florida Sports Network.
So it's funny you bring that up because there was a friend of mine who made a bet with his buddy that the Pistons, that the Lions would win more games than the Pistons. Wow. And it wasn't like on a sports book or anything. It was just two guys going at it. And this was, you know, months ago because it was when the Lions were still playing. By the way, Mark, Tim Brando is right with you. Tim Brando took to X and said, all right, all right, I'm not a big NBA guy, but, you know, playing, okay, I watch, and Zion can't even finish a game, okay? And he goes, and Phantom calls on LeBron, and he goes, I'm out. <laughs> well, there was a bad call late. LeBron got a foul call late. That was awful. It was. Can of relief. I'm with you. If you're a Leafs fan, bring on the Bruins. I agree. Have, have you? Did you watch the video that John sent us of the heckler? No. I think the reason he sent the, the I this guy on TikTok, the heckles are hysterical. But one of them was, "You eat a Kit Kat bar sideways, <laughs> you bum." <laughs> And then he has kind heckles for his own player. He's a Giants fan. You know, hey, Molten, I heard you play dress up with your daughter, you stud. <laughs> they are spectacular. A San Francisco Giants heckler? Yeah. That's great. All right. I'll have to watch it. <laughs> Thanks, Mac. I have no idea about the talent and uh, ed entertainment and what have you, but you know, maybe it's just stations who d desperately need programming. And they're laughing. And the players are finding this hysterical. <laughs> Did see the Masters numbers, Wes. Not good. Yelled at the catcher, hey, you don't put your kids' artwork on the fridge, you bum. <laughs> I bet you hit reply all the company wide emails. Yeah, Wes, this century, the highest rated Masters is Tiger in 01. The second highest rated was Phil in uh, 2010, I believe. But it is interesting. Now, the one thing that should be pointed out la last year, the Masters was on Easter Sunday. That's that's a big advantage in terms of people at home, in front of their TVs. Here we go. Who's our leading scorer, Kilos? You're listening to Miller and Moulton, only on the Florida Sports Network. And now, here's Mark Miller and David Moulton. 
22 minutes before the hour. Ian Cummings, the Pro Football Network, will join us an hour from now as we are eight days out from the draft. So we'll talk about it, if that's okay with you. You guys seem to like NFL talk. Mark Lai, two hours from now. Masters ratings came in. Not good. What does it mean, if anything? Talk to Mark Lai about the state of golf. And Seth in a little more than an hour. It's a hump day after all. There's actually a big story going on, which is right up Seth's alley, about the White Sox and the Bulls and the uh, Blackhawks and uh, how are their games going to be televised next year, if they're going to be on TV at all. So we'll talk to Seth about that coming up. But at 21 before the hour, time now for... The Starting Five. Five stories you need to know. It's the Starting Five on Miller and Moulton. Here's number one. Number one is Top Golf. Now, just bear with me. Mark, are you a fan of Top Golf? It's a it's an it's a good time. I'm not opposed to it. Would you conduct a job interview at Top Golf? No, but I'm not okay. again, uh, sure, why not? Well, the commanders in a way are so the commanders have invited a bunch of people yesterday and today to come meet with them. And last night, they took about 20 guys to top golf, including four quarterbacks Daniels, May, McCarthy, and Penix. I just hung out with them, Did a little top golf. Spend about 20 minutes with you, 20 minutes with you, 20 minutes with you. Whoever's got the best swing they're drafting? I, I, I mean. I don't know. I mean, you know, I hope it, they're not looking for etiquette. I mean, do you not draft a guy because he, you know, misses a seven iron and he slams his club? I mean, I got to admit his stock would go up in my book if he did that. But, so, but anyway, so the commanders just. I would say the commanders have made a lot of noise off the field this week. They hired a guy away from the NFL. They they hired another guy away. Uh, a lot of people are going, wow, they are putting together a first-class organization. And this is, forget the Daniel Snyder era. That This is a totally different organization now. Commanders getting major props from the rest of the NFL for some of the people that they're hiring in the professional community and bringing in in various roles. But So this is how they're doing it. Bringing them into a casual setting yesterday and uh, today. Doing a little top golf. Here's the thing. So do you do you eat if you're on the... I mean, you know, they, they, they bring over the mozzarella sticks. I mean, tough to say no to a mozzarella stick. You and cheese. Well, it always it, turns to cheese. Well, I mean, it could have been wings. I mean, you know, I'm just saying, I'm guessing if they're being this casual, they are pounding the appetizer menu. Oh, so yeah. When you're there. It's, and it's, like I doubt they're even ordered. I'm guessing trays are coming, David. Exactly. And so I'm just wondering if you're, you know, if you're Penix, if you're McCarthy, I, I mean, you know, is this a big decision? So did you try the mozzarella stick? No, man, I didn't want to give a bad impression. Oh, Didn't want to eat the fried food. Stuck with <laughs> right. the quesadilla. Exactly. I mean, do you just grab the carrots and the celery stick? I, you know, I, 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 anyway. Uh, Dolphin general manager Chris Greer. He uh, did an interview yesterday. A little pre-draft presser. He was asked, uh, so uh, what's the deal with two and an extension? He said, we're going to get it done. Both sides have agreed. Can we just get through the draft? You know, and then, uh, you know, second week of May, what have you, we'll really get down to business. Okay. Uh, he did, however, say publicly that we are going to extend wide receiver Jalen Waddell and linebacker Jalen Phillips. We will. So we're keeping them on board. Don't worry. Okay. Trevor Lawrence acknowledged yesterday that he and the Jags have started talking about a big money long-term extension, but Trevor was the one that said, quote, it's not really my focus right now, unquote. Translation, I know I'm going to get paid. I mean, what, are they going to go with Mac Jones? Come on. Hockey. 
So the Panthers beat the Leafs 5-2 after being down 2-0 after one. They scored four in the second. Sam Reinhardt, two goals. He finished the season with 57. But that was supposed to be a meaningless game. Except Boston lost at home to Ottawa 3-1. So the Panthers end up winning the division. They're the two seed in the East. Their reward is a first-round series with the Lightning. We get Florida, Tampa Bay. Yes! So Detroit needed to beat Montreal. They scored the tying goal with 3.3 seconds left in regulation. Then Patrick Kane scores the only goal of the shootout. So the Wings held up their end of the bargain. They just needed Philly to beat Washington. Problem was, Philly also needed to beat Washington, and they needed the Wings to lose. When the Wings were losing late third, Philly pulled their goalie with three minutes to go in a 1-1 game. Because Philly had to beat Washington in regulation. And Washington scored an empty netter. And then Philly looked up at the scoreboard, and the Wings had tied it and forced overtime, which eliminated the Flyers. The Flyers probably don't pull their goalie if they had been eliminated 30 seconds earlier. And vice versa, the Wings knew when... Yeah, by the time the shootout had come, the Wings were well aware that they were were done. done. Right. So Washington beats Philly 2-1. to They clinch the final playoff spot in the East. They'll play the Rangers in the first round. Wings, Penguins, Flyers, all eliminated. Gavin Brindley, the pride of Estero, He made his NHL debut in the season finale for the Blue Jackets yesterday. Played 14, 15 shifts, a little over 12 minutes of ice time. Even got a little power play time. Didn't appear on the score sheet. Columbus beat Carolina in an otherwise meaningless game, 6-3. Winnipeg beat Seattle 4-3. Jets clinched second in the division, so they'll have home ice in their first-round series against the Avs. Vegas beat Chicago 3-1. They moved ahead of the Kings into third place in the division, which means they would play Edmonton in the first round as opposed to being the last wild card and opening with Dallas. We'll see. The Kings and Vegas each still have a game to play. Vancouver clinched the Pacific Division in the two seed with a 4-1 win over Calgary. NBA, Lakers down big in the first quarter, up 10 at the half, up 17 in the third quarter, only to have New Orleans come all the way back, find 40 points and 11 rebounds from Zion and tie the game at 99. Then Zion left with three minutes to go with a leg injury, not to return. Lakers pull away and win 110-106. Lakers advance to the seven seed. They'll play Denver in the, the first round of the playoffs. New Orleans will host Sacramento in a true play-in game Friday. Sacramento took care of Golden State and eliminated the Warriors 118-94. Keegan Murray with 32 for the Kings. Clay Thompson was held scoreless in what could be his final game as a Warrior. 0 for 10 from the field, including 0 for 6 from deep. Eastern Conference play-ins tonight. Philly a 5.5-point favorite at home against the Heat. Bulls a three and a half point favorite at home against the Hawks. Winner of the Heat Sixers plays the Knicks in the first round. Loser hosts the winner of Hawks Bulls. Baseball. Hey, the Marlins won a game. Brian Weathers with a career high 10 strikeouts in six plus innings. Marlins double up the Giants 6 3. They're 4 and 14 on the season. Tampa Bay was down to their final out like three times. They scored all those times. A two in the ninth, two in the 13th. They beat the Angels 7 to 6. Cleveland scored one in the ninth and then one in 11, 10 7 over the Red Sox. See, Mark, the Red Sox started with a 10 game road trip, went 7 to 3. So then they came home for a 10 game homestand. They've currently played eight of those games, they're two and six. That's not good. No, let's go back on the road, shall we? Uh, Guardians, by the way, are 12 and 5. Braves, four in the ninth. They beat the Astros 6 2. Yankees have lost three in a row. 
They've lost their first series of the year, dropping a 5-4 decision to the Jays. Mets were 1-9 of 12 after the 0-5 start. They beat the Pirates 3-1. Gunnar Henderson with a homer and three RBIs. The Orioles, who are a hitting machine. You know that Jackson Holiday kid's got like one hit so far since he's been called up. And they don't even care. They're like, kid, don't worry about it. We're scoring 11 runs. Yeah, you'll, you'll figure it out. Just take your time. No big deal here. Fourth game in a row, the Orioles have hit three or more home runs. 11-3 over the Twins. Uh, Bryce Harper, home run three RBIs. Phillies 5 nothing over the Rockies. Detroit with two in the eighth, beat the Rangers 4-2. to two. Brewers double, or excuse me, Padres double up the Brewers, I should say, 6-3. They scored four in the first. Arizona scored in the seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth innings. Cattell Marte homered with two out in the ninth to send it to extras where the D-backs beat the Cubs 12-11. 3-1 Mariners over the Reds. Mark, guess the attendance of Tuesday night in Oakland. Cardinals in town. Ooh, Cardinals, solid fan base nationwide. I'm going to say it was packed. Uh, 62-40. Lower, lowest crowd of the year, 32-96. Wow! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cardinals over the A's, 3-2. Dodgers, 6-2 over the Nats. Mookie Betts, five hits. He's pretty good. The top of their lineup, by the way, is Betts and Otani. And then Freddie Freeman. That seems like a problem. Um, Other baseball news. Carl Erskine, who was the last surviving member of the only Brooklyn Dodgers team to win the World Series, the uh, Boys of Summer, the 55 crew. He passed away at the age of 97. Whitey Herzog, Hall of Fame manager, loved Whitey, great manager, died at the age of 92. He was at Cardinals opening day just two weeks ago. Uh, Trevor Bauer's accuser has been indicted for fraud in Arizona. Darcy Esamonu tried to, well, threaten that she was going to expose somebody else for the same stuff she alleged Trevor Bauer to have done unless that person gave her money. So she's not charged for fraud about Bauer, although Bauer and his attorneys the last two years were alleging that she was trying to embezzle him for money. Uh, and Roy McElroy, by the way, shut down all those LIV rooms with the Golf Channel, which he said, yeah, first off, I'm not interested. I'm going to play my whole career on the PGA Tour. And secondly, they've never made me an offer. Never. We have not had a serious conversation that would result in an offer. So I have no idea how these rumors started. The rumors started, by the way, from a publication, a financial publication in Europe. That said that they had the details about the negotiations. So that's how the rumor started. And as we approach eight minutes before the hour, that was. That was the starting five every weekday morning at this time on Miller and Moulton. Okay. Now, if you're a major league baseball franchise, can you sign Trevor Bauer? David, I would have already signed him. I know you and I both would have. You're innocent until you're proven guilty. He was never charged. Never charged. Two investigations into him. He was never charged. He clearly has been black blackballed. Okay. He was accused of domestic violence, was never charged twice by the same woman. Okay. He alleged the whole time that she asked him for money over $3 million. And he said, I'd rather, you know, lose my career than pay you the money. And so now he and his agent and what have you is going, see, see, he hasn't pitched in the majors in over two years. And he'll never pitch again in the majors. Are you sure? I think this is starting to have a Duke lacrosse feel to it. I got you. But Trevor Bauer, when we listen to David Sampson, he wasn't well liked before any of this. I understand. Although it's funny, Major League Baseball Radio gave him a weekly hour, and they called it the Bauer Hour. I mean, so they were all in on Trevor Bauer four years ago. They liked his personality. They liked his outspokenness. Rob Manford gave him a show. And now they want nothing to do with him. Not a damn thing. 
because of accusations that have proven to be false and from a woman who now has been charged with fraud for making similar accusations about someone else. Are you, you know sh- I'd sign him, but I don't think he will get signed. You don't think anyone – I mean, all these organizations, 28 of the 30 don't have starting pitching. Are we sure now? Do, how about that as a poll question? I love it. Miller and Moulton. Visit Jason and Todd at the Diamond District. 20 years ago, Jason and I had the idea for a jewelry store like no other. With a vast selection <coughs> of certified diamonds priced 8 to 12% over cost. A team of individuals who are educated, driven, and believe in cultivating relationships. Today, we have become one of the largest independent jewelry stores in the country. Todd and I love what we do and are in the store nearly every day along with our GIA gemologist, master jewelers, custom designers, and non-commissioned diamond consultants, all of which we consider family. As direct diamond importers, we travel the world, forging relationships and sourcing diamonds. What we love most about our business is that we can call Southwest Florida our home. If selection, value, and comfort are important to you, give the Diamond District an opportunity. You won't find a better diamond buying experience. Todd and I look forward to shaking your hand and welcoming you to our Diamond District family. At the Diamond District. Hello, friends and family of Southwest Florida. Are you looking to tap into the electric vehicle market? Well, look no further because we here at Southwest Florida Golf Carts have just what you need. E-bikes, golf carts, LSBs, scooters, and more. Come down and talk with one of our experienced sales reps, have a soda and a smile, and you could be cruising the streets in your new EV today. Stop by the store or visit our website at flgolfcarts.com and enter for a chance to win $100 off your next purchase by answering John's monthly sports question. The law firm of Michael F. Hornung specializes in criminal defense, DUI, personal injury, nursing home claims, and auto accidents. I'm a former prosecutor with over 34 years of experience. The information I know is information you need to know. If you've been arrested for a DUI, time is of the essence to maintain your driving privileges. Call the law firm of Michael F. Hornung for a free consultation. At the law firm of Michael F. Hornung, we are committed to excellence in your representation. Being a local attorney with local knowledge is clutch to the success of your case. For over 30 years, we have successfully represented the citizens of Southwest Florida. For a free consultation, call 239-437-0095. That's 239-437-0095. Our offices are conveniently located in Fort Myers. Visit online at mfh-law.com. Mark Miller for Molly Maid. Why Molly Maid, you ask? Trust. Molten was a customer for 15 years. Affordability. Didn't I just say Molten was a customer for 15 years? Worry-free services. Our professional house cleaners are fully insured and a 24-hour warranty. Call Molly Maids today at 239-774-5839. That's 239-774-5839 or online at mollymade.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. That's mollymade.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. You are listening to Miller & Molten on the Florida Sports Network. Just as simple as, do you think Trevor Bauer will play in the majors again?
today in 82, Johnny Cash was the host of SNL and Elton John was the musical guest. That's not bad. Right. And Cash did tunes as well. So they both performed. Did you see, uh, I wasn't watching it live. I just saw it once it was posted. So Chris Haynes is on the, the pregame show with the, you know, Chuck and Ernie and the guys. And he, so they had Chris Ernie, I guess, threw it to him and mentioned something about his, uh, playing exploits. And he says, I was MVP in the Filipino league. Okay. And so they asked him, you know, about well, how did you play the Filipino league? Well, I'm not Filipino, but I'm a guest. Barkley goes, no disrespect. Back. I know I'm going to get in trouble, but. You are listening to Miller and Moulton, exclusively on the Florida Sports Network. And now here's Mark Miller and David Moulton. Hour, Hour two, two of Miller and Moulton. On this hump day, as we get over it together, hope your week has gone well thus far, and hopefully we can add a little something to it as well. Miller and Moulton, MillerandMoulton.com, Miller underscore Moulton on X. We talked about a poll question all day yesterday. Did we actually post one? No. no. Part of our charm. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're that child that the parent just shakes their head about walking around the corner of the room, right? Well, I think we procrastinate and that, and I'm guilty of that all the time in life. My wife gets upset with me, gets upset with my daughter for doing it, but we come up with the idea for a question and never get to the question. We talk about the question, never get to the question. Well, sometimes there's also multiple ideas. It's hard to make up your mind. You know what the problem is? None of our, none of our ideas, Trent, are ever any good. I, <laughs> let's be honest. I think the problem is we don't do it at the right time. When the show starts, we get into the show during the breaks. David does one of two things. David completely engages the Twitch chat for the entire break, mm -hmm. or David goes for a lap and gets something to eat. Those right. are the only two things that happen during the break. <laughs> and if I try determines... to, if I literally try to say, "Hey, what do you want to do next segment?" He'll get up and leave the room. Right. I'll tell you what we're going to do next segment. I'm going to get a bowl of cereal. And I'll tell you we're going to do the next segment right when we start the next segment. Right. Uh, besides, I'm watching videos on uh, X. Leave me alone. Right. right. So anyway, here's a thought. Um, do you think enough people are familiar with Trevor Bauer and his story to actually have him in a poll question? See, that's the other thing. Other shows are really good at coming up with poll questions. We're not. And yet, in theory, it's they'd be sponsorable. They get people engaged, promote the show. So, But I have to admit, this Trevor Bauer story interests me. And it interests you, and it interests us, all right? He was accused. He was never even charged. Twice. They did two complete investigations. Two different bodies of law enforcement. Neither one charged him. Yet he was suspended by the Dodgers. He was paid. I mean, you know, don't feel totally sorry for him. He got his hundred million bucks. He did, but he hasn't pitched in the majors since 2022 and no one's willing to even sign him. He was a number one starter at worst. He was a number two. How many of those are there in baseball? Do you know how many teams could use a Trevor Bauer? Put it this way, there are, yeah, there are less number one starters than there are first round grades. If you know what I mean? 
Yes. And we go to the draft, 32 teams pick, but there's usually somewhere between 21 and 26 first round grades. I don't know if there are that many number one starters. And now, because of all the noise and how he's been discredited as a human being, because he was accused of violence against a woman, he claimed it was rough sex. He said, I got the pictures and the texts to prove it. I, I've got the money that she tried to get from me if I wouldn't play ball and get her to shut up. Okay. And, you know, it went public. The Dodgers suspended him and effectively ended his career, although he got most of the money that he was owed and he signed a $105 million contract. But you could sign Trevor Bauer right now for the league minimum. You could. He, he can't. said it. I, yeah. It, yeah it's, this isn't Molten just saying, well, you could sign him for the league. No, 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 no. Trevor Bauer said he would play for the league minimum. Now, he's a veteran of certain years, so I think the league minimum is you know, like a million and a half bucks. It's not the rookie salary scale, which I think is like 800000 But still, I mean, you're getting, a, in theory, even if he's not the same pitcher that he was, you're getting a solid starting pitcher for a million and a half bucks. You're get, at worst, you're getting a number three starter. Right. So, now that this woman, whose identity was kept private, which I think most of us are in favor of. Okay. I mean, it's, it's tough. And, and, and what's awful is, is that only 3% of the women who allege domestic violence have, turn out to be false claims. So, and it, and it takes a lot to convict a guy of domestic violence. It does. Okay. In fact, usually nine out of 10 claims of domestic violence don't end up in a conviction. So, I mean, this woman has done a real disservice to a lot of women because people remember this and they won't remember a lot of other things. But getting back to Trevor Bauer, if you're a major league team, now that she has been charged with doing to someone else what Trevor Bauer claimed she did to him, would you sign him? Remember, he's never been charged with a crime. And now her claims have the least amount of credibility that they've had in two plus years. If not discredited completely, would you sign him? And I... I... Asked it a little differently. So you're probably going to be upset with me. But I simply asked, do you think Trevor Bauer will ever play in the majors again? And he's pitched in Asia. He uh, is pitching in the Mexican League. He's had a couple of, um, you know, a couple exhibition appearances, which were good. As people are pointing out in our Twitch chat room, he actually had his first start in the regular season in the Mexican League yesterday and got roughed up. Less than four innings, four runs, and what have you. But would you sign him? I mean, there's no doubt you're going to have to send him to the minors. He's going to have to basically put in a, a spring training. You got to probably give him four weeks of work. But would you, would you sign Trevor Bauer? Now, are we going to ask, would you sign, or do you think anyone will sign? I asked, do you think he will ever play in the major leagues again? I actually think now he's going to get signed. Not this week, not next week. I actually think now, Mark, someone in June is going to sign him. I do. I actually think they're going to let him pitch regularly in the Mexican League and so that this way it's won't the transition won't be as long. That when they sign him, they'll be able to pitch him pretty soon. Yeah, and I think the fact that he was a guy that wasn't well liked in clubhouses from all accounts. Even though I know he did the show on Major League Baseball Radio, I, I get it. I think he's done. I think Major League Baseball has put the kibosh on any chance of him getting signed. I think there is a wink, wink, nudge, nudge deal going on. I think it's borderline collusion and that he'll never play in the league again. So that's our poll question. 
about Trevor Bauer. Do you think he ever pitches pitches in the majors again? That Mark Miller, I'll retweet it soon at the David Moulton, and you can find it, uh, you know, that whole Miller underscore Moulton thing on X. So uh, there you go. But we're fired up. We've got the Lightning and the Panthers in the first round of the playoffs. Yeah! Man, I'm jacked for this. All the storylines. All of them. This, and also, this could be the end. I mean, the Lightning may be playing. This could be their Golden State Warrior series. I mean, the run started at the same time. The Lightning lost in the finals in 2015. The Warriors won their first title in 2015. The Lightning have won how many cups, Mark? Two. They've been to four. They lost in 15 and they lost in 22 to the Avs and they won the two back-to-back in 20 and 21. And they went to two other conference finals that they lost it. I mean, the Lightning have made deep playoff runs virtually every year for the last nine seasons. I think six conference finals, four Stanley Cup finals, twice they hoisted the sucker. Well, the Warriors have gone to six finals and won it four times in the last 10 seasons. They were eliminated in the play-in last night. Because, you know, Stamkos' contract is up as soon as the playoffs are over. Now, we all hope he stays in Tampa Bay. It would be disgraceful if the Lightning let him get away. Best player in franchise history. You've got to be kidding me. And your captain. But, I mean, this could be the end for Stamkos and the Lightning. And is this their last run? I don't think so because in basketball, you watch Clay be a different player than he was during the run. Draymond's not close to where he was during the run. Vasilevsky's still damn near as good as he was 10 years ago. And if you have a Vasilevsky, David, we've pointed this out before. It's like having a... You give yourself a pretty good shot of win. It's like having a Joe Burrow. I mean, when you have a Vasilevsky, it's like having a Joe Burrow. And Braden Point, what he's become, and Kucherov, what he's become during this, they've been able to maintain a level that, to me, is impossible to maintain in the NBA. So I don't think they're done. Okay. All right. The only problem is the East has gotten really good with them. And then here's the Panthers. This is the best team they've ever had. It is. It's the best team they've ever had. They've won the President's Trophy before. They've gone to two Stanley Cup Finals before. This is the best team they've ever had. And they have to go through a team they've never beaten in the playoffs. The in-state team who's made hockey stick, who's legitimate. And then you got the Panthers. The Lightning are everything the Panthers are trying to be. And Tampa Bay, going all the way back to their existence, Phil Esposito, who helped bring the Lightning into existence, has a major beef with the Panthers. Up on the scoreboard, he would always put Miami. He wanted the Lightning to be Florida. Right. For their namesake. And the league didn't allow it. The league said Tampa Bay is going to be your name. And when they allowed the Florida Panthers to be the Florida Panthers, it honked Espo off. And so he always calls them Miami. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That's a 30-year grudge. For a team that has zero history, and he holds a grudge against them. He doesn't like them. So let's do this, shall we? Lightning and Panthers. I hope it goes seven. Let's do it for two full weeks. It begins this weekend. Ian Cummings, Pro Football Network, will preview the draft in 25 minutes. The law firm of Michael F. Hornung specializes in criminal defense, DUI, personal injury, nursing home claims, and auto accidents. I'm a former prosecutor with over 34 years of experience. 
the information I know is information you need to know. If you've been arrested for a DUI, time is of the essence to maintain your driving privileges. Call the law firm of Michael F. Hornung for a free consultation. At the law firm of Michael F. Hornung, we are committed to excellence in your representation. Being a local attorney with local knowledge is clutch to the success of your case. For over 30 years, we have successfully represented the citizens of Southwest Florida. For a free consultation, call 239-437-0095. That's 239-437-0095. Our offices are conveniently located in Fort Myers. Visit online at mfh-law.com. Mark Miller for Molly Maid. Why Molly Maid, you ask? Trust. Molten was a customer for 15 years. Affordability. Didn't I just say Molten was a customer for 15 years? Worry-free services. Our professional house cleaners are fully insured and a 24-hour warranty. Call Molly Maids today at 239-774-5839. That's 239-774-5839 or online at mollymade.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. That's mollymade.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. Hello, friends and family of Southwest Florida. Are you looking to tap into the electric vehicle market? Well, look no further because we here at Southwest Florida Golf Carts have just what you need. E-bikes, golf carts, LSVs, scooters, and more. Come down and talk with one of our experienced sales reps, have a soda and a smile, and you could be cruising the streets in your new EV today. Stop by the store or visit our website at flgolfcarts.com and enter for a chance to win $100 off your next purchase by answering John's monthly sports question. We're listening to Miller and Moulton on the Florida Sports Network. <laughs> uh, former Florida Senator Bob Graham passed away overnight, I guess, or late last night. 87. He was pretty influential around 9-11.
Oh, well, Irish, I'm worried about uh, Alvarez. I mean, I'm worried that every pitcher who's gone on the IL with a minor injury, they've all turned out to be major. So, you know, if he comes back May 1st, that's one thing. But you lose him. I don't know. And they do have a first base problem. There's no doubt about it. Oh, Kilos, I mean, winning four games on the road against anybody is not a joke. I mean, I know you don't like the Yankees, but come on. Plus, the Yankees came from behind in three of the four games. Never mind. Four seconds, three seconds, two seconds. <laughs> You're listening to Miller and Moulton, only on the Florida Sports Network. 21 minutes after the hour. Ian Cummings, Pro Football Network. We'll look ahead to the draft, which is eight days away in a little more than 15 minutes' time. Am I going to show my age here? The answer is probably yes. Yes. Mark- <laughs> yes. But I have to admit, Trent is doing something right now, which, well, he's not doing something. It's what he's, it's what he's wearing. And it, it, it bothers me. See, For now, maybe it's just because he woke up late and he was scrambling just to get here for the beginning of the show. And maybe he grabbed the first thing that, you know, he literally could get his hands on. No, I don't think so. Because it kind of matches. I mean, the undershirt matches the jersey. I know. It does I mean, look. He's very Georgetown Hoya-ish from 40 years ago. Yes. yes. Yeah. Um, What jersey is that you're wearing? Ray Allen, Miami Heat. Right. See, that bothers me. And it bothers me because Ray Allen, and granted, he had a really big shot. He did. Had a big moment. A big shot. What did he play? Two years? Yeah. The two. Right. Okay. And even though he had a really big shot on that team, was he the best player? No, was he no. was the sixth no, was he the best player. Second best player? No. Third? No. Fourth? Eh, maybe. Probably, maybe, depending on the day. What's no, that no, what, what no. Is... I, I wouldn't even say fourth. I'd say like fifth or sixth best player. See, okay. David, you can't get mad at me because I'll admit that. What, what do you, I want to know what you're mad at him about. What are you doing buying a Ray <laughs> Allen Heat jersey? Come on. Not a Ray Allen Milwaukee Bucks jersey. Not a Ray Allen Boston Celtics jersey. All hate mail can be directed to my younger brother. This is his. This is not mine. So you stole it. You stole this is a stolen jersey. When I was home, I I here's the thing. I flew home with a backpack full of clothes and my dop kit, whatever I gotta bring. When I came back, I brought a second backpack full of stuff from home. And most of it consisted of jerseys. Of course. My closet right. and your brother's closet. Because he's trying to dress up for all the women that he's trying to meet. He's like, <laughs> you know what I need? I need jerseys. When I go out during the spring and summer, okay, I need jerseys. I don't need a heat It's a big game for the heat tonight. 
I was stunned when Felipe, our previous producer, told me he had a girlfriend. I was stunned. I, I was floored. There was no way that a kid that wears basketball jerseys every day mm-hmm. thinks he could play in the NBA. Right. Five nine and right. Mm-hmm. And conducts himself the way that he is could actually get himself a girl and a really nice one. And they're still together. Right. She's a super young lady. I, I, I know. I, I think she's wonderful. It just goes to show how bad the male talent pool really is. It, well, I mean, they are just so desperate. They really are. I mean, they're they're just, you know, they're aiming for an eight and they're settling for a five and a half. I mean, they really are. So maybe we are old, not a touch. Maybe it is, you know, maybe Trent's going to go out today in that heat jersey and meet right. the love of his life. And I yeah. hope the best looking woman that he has ever seen walks up to him and said, you know, you're kind of cute, but you're wearing a Ray Allen heat jersey. I mean, I would have, like, wanted to meet you, but it's Ray Allen. But I'm going to take a stab at something here. All right. Based on the little I know about you. I know you pretty well, but I we've only known each other a short time. Right. But you've given us a couple of clues that you buy a lot of your jerseys on the cheap. Yes. And what I think this was was simply a value purchase. For a heat jersey that he probably bought for less than ten dollars on a website long after Ray Allen was done with the heat. Am I close? Well, the second part of that's very true. It was a couple years ago. My brother again, this is my brother's. My brother bought this. Don't blame it on it. Because, David, I'm like, oh, I got a job in Florida. Oh, I'm going home. Oh, there's a heat jersey in the closet. I'm taking that. I don't care if it's Alonzo Morning, Gary Payton. Dwayne Wade, LeBron James, I'm taking it. It's Ray Allen. And here's the thing. A lot of people that own Heat Ray Allen jerseys, which there's not many out there. I was going to say there's 14 of them. (laughs) But a lot of people that own them do it to troll LeBron because, you know, James catches, puts up a three, won't go, rebound bash, back out to Allen, his three-pointer, bang! And then we go to game seven. And Ray Allen has zero points in game seven for what it's worth. But Mike Breen Jr. over there. All right. But yes, Mark, to answer your question, roundabout way, long answer, you're very close. Yes. It was bought on a cheap a couple of years ago. There you go. See, and and I am slowly, David, I have been beaten down by between Felipe and Trent and our Twitch chat room and the population in general that our long standing rule of wearing a jersey past the age of 25. We're on an island, David, and yeah. you and I are on it alone. We thought we were on the mainland when we instituted that rule, and we have been just thrown on an island, and it is damn near deserted. We're hoping for a volleyball with a face painted on it, David. That's <laughs> that's where we're at right now. I'm just hoping for a message in a bottle. All right. Hey, you haven't done one of these in like three weeks. You still remember how, what it's all about? We'll give it a shot. Uh, The Rays walked it off last night, but it was a chopper to third. And if I'm going to be honest, it was kind of a lazy call. So um, I'll see your Rays walk off and I will raise you a Kevin Harlan call from the NBA play-in tournament, baby. Pelicans a home favorite against the Lakers. Why? I don't know. Uh, but LeBron led the charge for L.A. Zion dropped 40, but sometimes the old man needs to teach a little bit. LeBron is 4-10 with 17, 2-5. to five. Oh, look at this. Spinning, there. scooping, scoring. Oh, oh, oh. What a dance right there by James. That's old school. <laughs> That's old school, says Reggie Miller. Uh, LeBron makes Zion dance a little bit. Lakers beat the Pelicans by 4, 110-106 to is the final. And we have a Western Conference Finals rematch. Denver Nuggets, Los Angeles Lakers, game one's on Saturday. There's your Molly Made play of the day. Call Molly Made today. If you're looking for someone to clean your home or you're not satisfied with who's currently doing it, give Molly Made a shot. 239-774-5839. That's 239-774-5839. Please tell him Miller and Moulton sent you. The old man played 41 minutes, 23 points, 9 rebounds, 9 assists. Just a night at the office. 
he's played what 70 plus games this year right he's leading the team in minutes he's the oldest player in the league by a lot who's next chris paul yeah but what's that three four years a couple at least yeah I will say, by the way, I mean, he has been asked a couple times recently how much longer is he playing, and he has said not long. I mean. Well, and given the whole way things have worked out with Bronny, too. I mean, Bronny declares for the NBA draft. Uh, he's also entered the portal. I mean, the likelihood is he's going to stay in college. Right, but LeBron's timing with that, too, was like, I don't know how much longer I'm going to be around. Next day, Bronny declares. Who knows? Someone's going to draft Bronny in the second round, and with that, they're going to get the rights to LeBron James. Am I wrong? No. <laughs> no, probably not. I know you hate it, but am I wrong? No, we've been no, saying we've... this for the longest time. We've been we've been right there with you, Trent, that this is how this is going to all go down. Kid has no business declaring for the draft. I mean, How about start in college? How about if you start there? How about if he can actually start? Like, I'm not kidding. Like, uh, LeBron's buddy is the new coach at Duquesne. Go to Duquesne and play, start every game for him. Play 32 minutes a night. Do that for a year. Anyway. Uh, Ian Cummings. The draft. You know, the NFL. It's kind of popular. We'll talk to him about it next. The law firm of Michael F. Hornung has successfully represented the citizens of Southwest Florida for over 30 years. As a former prosecutor, the information I know is information you need to know. If you've been arrested for a DUI, a criminal matter, or involved in an auto accident, call the law firm of Michael F. Hornung. I'm a local attorney with local knowledge to assist you through the process. For a free consultation, call 239-437-0095. That's 239-437-0095. Offices in Fort Located on the East Trail, locally owned Naples Tiki Bar and Grill is an outdoor eatery next to the Hitching Post Shopping Center. Island-inspired food with a true tiki theme. The best place in Naples to enjoy the beautiful weather in Southwest Florida. The Naples Tiki Bar and Grill offers a great menu for dine-in or takeout. Enjoy our famous pulled pork, huge burgers, and tiki bar cocktails. Don't miss happy hour every day from 3 to 6 and live music seven days a week. See you soon at the Naples Tiki Bar and Grill, 11498 Tamiami Trail East. Visit Jason and Todd at the Diamond District. Hi, I'm Jason. And I'm Todd with the Diamond District. I believe in complete transparency. If you're shopping for diamonds in Naples, you're paying too much. If you're shopping in the Cape or Fort Myers, you also won't see the selection you deserve to have. If you're online, there's no human connection, and you won't know if your diamond is beautiful or not until it shows up in the mail. Just because it's GI certified doesn't mean it's brilliant. There's so much more to a diamond than its cut, color, and clarity that makes it beautiful. Visit us at the Diamond District for a non-commissioned and educational presentation and quit paying more in Naples or buying blind from the internet. The Diamond District has the rarest diamonds from half carat to 10 carats. You won't find a bigger selection or better value. And you won't find a better buying experience. Jason and I are in the store nearly every day, and we look forward to shaking your hand and welcoming you to our Diamond District family. At the Diamond District. You are listening to Miller and Moore on the Florida Sports Network. Okay, so if we actually think about this. Wait, what are you laughing at? First of all? Ah, none of your damn business. Okay, How about okay, that? Right. <laughs> How about that? That's totally fine with me. 
<laughs> if we actually think about this. <laughs> Is that a 10 year old joke, by the way? Yeah. Oh, and maybe uh, maybe longer. Well, Griffin played like 13, 14 years. So I'm trying to, so it's got, you know, wasn't he in the league two, three years when we did that? So Blake that's got to be a 10 year old joke. You guys have a Blake Griffin joke? What is it? Oh, like? it's just, it was just during the show. And our old producer says, Blake Griffin or Kevin Love? We, which one will we take? And David, without hesitating, goes, Kevin Durant. <laughs> right. and, and Mark is like, the that's the problem with doing a show with you. It was so funny. God, the two of them ganged up on me with so much material. We asked you A or B. You cannot answer C. Well, you gave the right answer. You, you know what? Looking back on the question then and now, David did give the right answer. He was the right answer. And so, so, but here's the funny thing, Trent. So as the years would go by, I would look at Mark and it let just hypothetically. You know, I would go, uh, you know, I don't know. Joe Burrow, Lamar Jackson, okay? And Mark would go, Patrick Mahomes, okay? <laughs> okay, and just kind of look, and then mouth to me, Kevin Durant. <laughs> like, you deserve that blankety blank. Every time. Uh Blake Griffin or Kevin Love? Kevin Durant. Do you guys see Blake retired? Yes. Is that kind of why you're bringing no, this up? Just, I, our old producer just decided to text us because he asked us advice on a bet and it didn't hit. So he let us know <laughs> at 7.34 in the morning that his bet didn't hit and basically was blaming us. That's great. The bet was with LeBron score five points in the first quarter last night. We both said yes, and LeBron hit an early three. And then didn't score for the rest of the quarter. And had like five assists, too. Right. Played well. <laughs> Just didn't score. That's funny. Well, and they're losing. And so so you put money on LeBron to score. He's passing and they're losing. So for two reasons, you're yelling at the TV, shoot! Why does everybody think Dak Prescott's getting traded? Well, what are the Cowboys going to do at quarterback? What, Cooper Rush? Trey Lance? Trey Lance, the, the two guys combined have started six games. Trey Lance. Come on, David. What about Trey Lance? Well, he's the third overall pick for a reason. Yeah, Zach Wilson was the second overall pick. <laughs> Touche. Can do this all night. <laughs> all night. Okay, we got Ian. Here we go. All night. You're listening to Miller and Moulton, only on the Florida Sports Network. And now, here's Mark Miller and David Moulton. 22 minutes before the hour. Seth Everett at the top of the hour. Mark Lye, one hour from now. Thanks for being with us. Hump Day edition, Miller and Moulton. MillerandMoulton.com. Miller underscore Moulton on X. Our poll question in light of Trevor Bauer's accuser being charged with making false accusations. Do you think Trevor Bauer now will play in the major leagues ever again? Yes or no? 70% saying no right now, by the way. 70 plus percent saying no. And the vote's pretty high for a, a poll question at this time of the day. 
So listen, yesterday, if we had asked that question at this time, it would have been 99%. So, you know, I think Trevor Bauer is making some headway. Uh, that Mark Miller, the David Moulton, Miller underscore Moulton on X is where you go to vote. Ian Cummings is kind enough to join us. He analyzes the draft for Pro Football Network and profootballnetwork.com. Follow Ian on X at IC underscore draft. I C, that's the letter I, the letter C for Ian Cummings. I C underscore draft. Ian, David, and Mark, good morning. How are you? Hey, David and Mark. Good to talk to you guys again. I'm good. We're uh, we're a little over a week out from the 2024 NFL Draft. We've had a ton of anticipation building up this offseason. We're finally right on the doorstep. I'm excited to see what happens. So many different possibilities. We'll get to find out what truly happens next week. What, if anything, has changed on your board? You've been working on this for a while. You finally have your final board, I believe, uh, up. So what if what if anything has changed in your world in the last week to 10 days? In the last week to 10 days, not a ton. Uh, it's been mostly solidified since then. I would say I've properly valued the top offensive linemen in the class. I've got, I think, five guys in my top 20 around uh, 10 in my top 32. So it's a really strong class at the very top of the offensive line. And a couple guys like Troy Fatanu from Washington, he was a top 20 guy for me, but now he's my 13th overall player. Taliesa Kuaga is my 11th overall player. So I've been steadily moving those guys up and getting the proper valuation on them. But the moral of the story, this class is particularly strong at a few positions, a wide receiver, offensive tackle. And then I'd say the defensive back group is a lot deeper than people think. And that's also something that I've figured out over the past few days. But most of the noteworthy, the, the more noteworthy positions like quarterback, right? That's been solidified. It's been solidified for a long time for me. You're all in on Drake May, correct? Didn't you rate him number one? Yep. He, he and Caleb Williams are my top two players. All right. Sell us on Drake May. You know, if you believe the, the noise that is out there, that maybe May could fall even to three. But, you know, just pound the table a little bit for Drake May. For sure. And, you know, it's one of those things I like to remain outcome independent as an analyst. We don't know what's going to happen with these guys. And if you're a little, you know, if you get skittish when guys have mechanical issues like May does, I don't think it's a liability by any stretch, but his inconsistent footwork and base width can lead to situational imprecision at times. I think that would be the biggest thing. Some lapses in decision-making under pressure in the heat of the moment situation, right? He's a young QB. And I think a lot of the flaws that he has are young QB flaws, but you're hoping that with more experience, he can iron those out because what makes me so excited about his potential, right, is I see a really complete palette of physical talent and operational utility underneath the surface. I think, you know, the talent is right on the surface. you got the athleticism, the size, right? You know, he doesn't utilize his running ability as much as, say, Jaden Daniels, but he can get out in space. He can hurdle guys. He's got really good straight line speed. He's got agility in the pocket. And his arm talent, to me, is really slept on in this class. People talk about his arm like it's a cannon, right? You've got the strength for sure. But his angle freedom, his arm elasticity, his ability to manipulate his launch release points off platform, right from any platform, rolling to his left, to his right, you know, on the move. He's so good at staying balanced and making those off platform throws. Caleb Williams gets all the notoriety for that. He's very good too. But I think Drake May is also in that tier, that top tier off platform creative thrower. And then his anticipation, his window anticipation, his ability to manipulate defenders and open up windows down the field, throw over the middle, right? You know, I think the mechanical accuracy things definitely needs to iron those out a little bit more, but he has shown he can control precision to a very precise point, throwing where only his receiver can get it, but then also throwing them away from contact over the middle. So those flashes are there. It's not that he can't do it, but in the right situation with the right incubation, I think the ceiling is sky high. I think it's the highest ceiling in the NFL draft. And then you look at what he brings on the operational side with the processing ability, the leverage IQ, and the pocket management. It's an investment. It's a risk that I'm very much worth taking. Very quickly, is a Josh Allen comparison accurate? Because if we go back and remember, the knock on Allen, besides the fact he played at Wyoming, was that he completed like 55% of his passes. And usually guys who are not accurate on Saturdays don't become accurate on Sundays. He was one of the first to do it and do it in a big way. Yeah, I think um, from a physical talent perspective, the running ability is then an arm strength. I don't think it's quite as strong as Allen, but Allen was, he's one of one, right? You know, he's the peak of arm strength. So I think from a talent perspective, there is that. I think May is more accurate. I think his accuracy issues are not nearly as bad as Allen's were coming out. I comp him more to Jordan Love. You know, what we saw from Love in 2023 with the Packers, a streamlined, taller guy 
He's got really good mobility in the pocket, outside the pocket, but also the off-platform freedom to create and make throws from any type of position, right? So, and I think he doesn't need two or three years to sit. I think Drake May is Jordan Love with a probably faster developmental runway for me. So that's kind of the comp that I would lean, but the talent is there. Accuracy could be improved on, but you're working in the right direction. Is Caleb Williams NFL ready? And, and, you know, I ask that because he's going to get thrown in, and a lot of people are worried uh, the Bears' record with QBs is awful, and here comes yet another highly touted quarterback that may play week one. I think he is NFL ready. I do. I think there are a few things that I wanted to see him improve a little more on in 2023. The biggest thing, right, is his play style, the magician ability off script, right, to create, you know, with defenders closing in in multiple directions, the change of direction, the again, the off-platform, arm elasticity, two things that are very strong and prevalent with both Williams and May. But I think with Williams, you see that creation ability off script. There are times occasionally well where he will bring on unnecessary chaos to himself by missing receivers over the short range, right? Kind of hesitating on initial reads. So I want him to be a little more efficient at picking out those easy throws. Take the easy throw. Don't play hero ball all the time. But at the same time, looking at his situation at USC, a lot of pressure was given up up the middle and by the tackles, right? So he was dealing with that very often. And then on the defensive side, you're having to score 40 points a game just to keep your team in it. So the situation was conducive to Williams feeling like he had all that pressure on his shoulders. So I think a supporting cast like the one that the Bears are building will actually do do wonders for him and his comfort early on. And I do think, you know, past the creation ability and the high upside tools, I think when you see him operate on RPO looks and rhythm throws, he's got very clean mechanics, very good accuracy over the middle of the field, you know, on slants and digs. I do think he has more than enough in his immediate talent to start at a, at a decently high level. And then again, the ceiling is just near unmatched. So to answer your question, the upside is there, but I do think he's ready to start right away. I know you just rate prospects, but do you take any organizational bias into effect? Like, for example, you pointed out Clemson does an amazing job with defensive tackles. Like those that have been drafted in the last 10 years out of Clemson, they're really good in the NFL, even better than where they were drafted. By the same token, Ian, offensive tackles from Alabama have woefully underperformed compared to where they were drafted. So should I hold that against J.C. Latham? I would say it's something to be aware of, right? Uh, It's one of those things where, yeah, if the school has a track record, you're going to notice it for sure. But one of the big no-nos of scouting is helmet scouting, right? You know, you never want to judge a guy just by the helmet. Obviously, you're going to take note of it. But if you helmet scout, right, I'll, I'll, it's a pretty cliche example, but C.J. Stroud last year. Like, if you if you looked at Ohio State's track record at quarterback, and it was like, oh, Terrell Pryor, Dwayne Haskins, like, you know, I wouldn't want a Cardale Jones, right? Like, it's not a it's not a very strong track record, so that would maybe turn you off to C.J. Stroud. And we saw a lot of people kind of use that helmet scouting argument to say, what if he's not the guy, right? Obviously, there is an outcome where maybe he didn't work out, but as a prospect, C.J. Stroud was different. So I think you have to look at it on a case-by-case basis for each prospect you take it into account you you be aware of it you acknowledge it but that's as far as you go i i don't think you should let it impact your process i know the tackles are good i know the center from oregon's really good the rest of the interior linemen how deep is the draft regarding that because i look at the dolphins maybe looking at a guard and i don't know what they'll be able to do in round two i think uh there's there's talent for sure i think there are a few guys that have tackle guard flex where they might transition inside to the next level but um, I think the, the pure guard class, Graham Barton, is, is my top IOL. I don't know if the Dolphins – if the Dolphins don't get him in round one, they're not getting him, so that's that's tricky, but he's a good player. I think um, Christian Haynes from Utah is a very good player as well. He's around 6'3", 318, right, 34-inch arms, really physical, explosive, tenacious. He's a mauler. Big fan of his game. Cooper Beebe is also a round two option potentially. Uh, he's a little bit shorter arms, but I see some Kevin Zietler with him where I think he could just be a really good starter for a long time. Christian Mahogany, kind of in that similar mold from Boston College, a little explosive, physical, tenacious. Again, a little stiff in the hips, not great lateral mobility, but you're still getting a solid starter. And then you go down the board, I think uh, Kieran Amagaji from Yale is one of those tackles who transitions well to guard. Dominic Cooney from Kansas is another one. Brandon Coleman from TCU, Mason McCormick from South Dakota State. I do think there are options for sure. For the Dolphins, it's just about finding the right one for them. Who has that schematic versatility in the run game? where they can operate reach blocks, you know, across the apps, or they can pull across the formation and block in space, too. I think finding that versatility and that schematic flexibility is key. But to answer your question, I think there's a lot of options. I think it it peters off a little bit in the day three range. So ideally, you get them on day two. 
But within that day two window, there is a lot to take from. Problem for the Dolphins, they don't have a third and they don't have a fourth round pick. So do they use that second round pick to pick somebody or do they trade out to try to get some additional picks? He's Ian Cummings, Pro Football Network, profootballnetwork.com. His big board is out. Top 300. He posted it Monday. I C underscore draft. Letter I, letter C underscore draft is how you follow him on X. Uh, by the way, is there a running back worth a darn in this draft? Like, will there be one taken in the top 50? Or are we going to go almost around three before we get a running back? It's a good question. And uh, I, I don't have a definitive answer this year. Last year, we had B. John Robinson, Jameer Gibbs. We knew that those guys were special, right? This year, it's a little more uncertain. My top three running backs, I have a Trey Benson from Florida State as my RB1. Jonathan Brooks from Texas is my RB2. And then Will Shipley from Clemson. I know he's not quite as good in congestion, but I really like his explosiveness, his speed, his hip flexibility, his vision, and then his receiving ability, too. I think in the modern NFL, that'll play really well. Those are my top three guys. Blake Quorum is after that. Bucky Irving, Dylan Lobby, Isaiah Davis. But I, I think this year's class, none of those guys are in my top 50. So Trey Benson is my first one at 51. I think it depends on, you know, how teams feel, right? Because we've seen situations where, going back to, I think, last year, the Seahawks picked Zach Charbonnet in round two, right? And no one expected that and because they had Kenneth Walker. They didn't need to pick a guy that high, but if you're a team that feels comfortable taking that luxury early on, sometimes teams surprise us. So I look at Trey Benson, Jonathan Brooks. I My gut tells me those are the first two off the board. What order they go, I'm not sure, but they both fit that volume back profile. They both have that slashing ability, that speed on the vertical plane, and then some receiving upside as well. So I'm thinking in that 40 to 60 range is probably where we'll see it because that's when teams start to get comfortable taking that luxury pick. But I, I think that's the earliest we see running back get off the board. I have nearly the same question with tight end. I, we know Brock Bowers is going to go early, but after that, the tight end class pretty thin, isn't it? it? It's a little thin, for sure. I think there are a few guys that are are better than the consensus evaluations let on. Ben Sinnott, for example, from Kansas State, he's in my top 50. I, I think up his pure upside, his ultimate ceiling, he's got some Dallas Clark through him. I think his size his fluidity on change of directions, his bend as a route runner, his all-around versatility. He's got an incredible, incredibly vast route tree. So you can use him as an H-back, in-line, big slot, even out wide. So he's really versatile, very solid player. I think he could be one of those guys kind of in a similar usage palette to Sam LaPorta where you can use him wherever and he can be a really good starter right out of the gate. Uh, Jared Wiley from TCU is another one. Another move tight end who's an incredibly flexible mover for his size. He's got that vertical speed to threaten the team as well. Really good hands. He really improved his red zone efficiency this past year. And then even guys like Jatavian Sanders, probably a big slot at the next level. He's a fringe top 100 guy for me. Theo Johnson from Penn State, another seam rack guy. Not great in the red zone because he doesn't have good hands. He's an inline blocker as well. And then Eric All from Iowa. You know, med- medicals kind of caused him to fall under the radar. But he's a very complete tight end as well. So I think it does fall off after Brock Bowers. Brock Bowers is just different as a prospect. But Ben Sinnott, Jared Wiley, I think there are a few guys in the day two range who, if you can get them at the right spot and put them in the right offensive scheme environment, they can be really good players for you and exceed their draft capital. Okay, 30 seconds, and really it's all we have. Brock Bowers, are we talking like explosive elite tight end, or are we thinking he's just going to be a very good tight end? I think in the right scheme, if you can use, if you can understand that he's a weapon, not just a tight end, and get him the ball any way possible – he can be that guy. He can be that explosive weapon who elevates your offense. Athletically, there's some Vernon Davis there, just with the speed and the seam breaking ability. Um, you know, I do think you need to have a plan with how you execute with him, but the upside is nearly unmatched. Ian Cummings, Pro Football Network, ProFootballNetwork.com. They have done a great job prepping you for the draft. Ton of mock drafts. Ian's big board is out. Follow Ian on exit. The letter I, the letter C, underscore draft. I C underscore draft. Uh, Ian, we know you'll be busy next week. Hopefully we can talk to you or somebody with PFN, but uh, safe travels. All the best. Yes, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. Ian Cummings joining us once again here on Miller & Moulton. I don't know if it's that I married a Pittsburgh girl, but when I see I see draft, I'm just thinking of an Iron City. <laughs> You're also thinking about we're gonna we're gonna drink when we do our draft live on Twitch a week from tomorrow. There's no doubt. I've been I I've thought, you know, Trent, I might invite him to the house, but I'm gonna have to get him an Uber for the ride home because there's no way anybody's driving home after this draft. Miller and Moulton. Visit Jason and Todd. 
at the Diamond District. If you're in love and thinking about a diamond, you'll want to hear from my friends Jason and Todd at the Diamond District. When purchasing a diamond, you deserve a relaxed, stress-free, and educational experience. You want to have a good time and feel comfortable. You want selection, quality, and value. At the Diamond District, you'll get it all. With our team of non-commissioned diamond advisors, no one's in a rush. We care only about you and making sure your needs and wishes are fulfilled. You'll be wowed by our selection of GIA certified diamonds, stunning diamond bracelets, earrings, pre-owned Rolex watches, exotic ruby, sapphire, emerald, and tanzanite jewelry. There's something for everyone at the Diamond District and all at the lowest prices anywhere. Jason and I love what we do and are in the store nearly every day. We look forward to shaking your hand and welcoming you to our Diamond District family. Visit Jason and Todd at the Diamond District. Mark Miller for Molly Maid. Why Molly Maid, you ask? Trust. Molten was a customer for 15 years. Affordability. Didn't I just say Molten was a customer for 15 years? Worry-free services. Our professional house cleaners are fully insured. And a 24-hour warranty. Call Molly Maids today at 239-774-5839. That's 239-774-5839. Or online at mollymade.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. That's mollymade.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. Hello, friends and family of Southwest Florida. Are you looking to tap into the electric vehicle market? Well, look no further because we here at Southwest Florida Golf Carts have just what you need. E-bikes, golf carts, LSVs, scooters, and more. Come down and talk with one of our experienced sales reps, have a soda and a smile, and you could be cruising the streets in your new EV today. Stop by the store or visit our website at flgolfcarts.com and enter for a chance to win $100 off your next purchase by answering John's monthly sports question. The law firm of Michael F. Hornung specializes in criminal defense, DUI, personal injury, nursing home claims, and auto accidents. I'm a former prosecutor with over 34 years of experience. The information I know is information you need to know. If you've been arrested for a DUI, time is of the essence to maintain your driving privileges. Call the law firm of Michael F. Hornung for a free consultation. At the law firm of Michael F. Hornung, we are committed to excellence in your representation. Being a local attorney with local knowledge is clutch to the success of your case. For over 30 years, we have successfully represented the citizens of Southwest Florida. For a free consultation, call 239-437-0095. That's 239-437-0095. Our offices are conveniently located in Fort Myers. Visit online at mfh-law.com. You're listening to Miller and Moult on the Florida Sports Network. Hi, Seth. Hi, guys. How are you? I'm good. Seth, I thought of you yesterday. Oh, I think of you all the time. I was waiting. <laughs> oh, thanks, Seth. I was waiting for my garage door was busted, so I was waiting for the garage door repair guy to come. Okay. And, and I'm just watching some television, and because I because I have a cord cutter, I. Like you, yeah. you don't know what channel it is. Sure. But I flip on the TV after watching a Better Call Saul okay. and just seeing what's on around 3 o'clock. And our local CBS is wink. And it, it, the thing that said, you know, Champions League soccer. And I'm going, on CBS? What the what? Well, on I a Tuesday? Know. I'm like... I was freaking out. I'm like, I couldn't believe that they aired that game on CBS. That's weird. I didn't know that. Uh, I mean, that must have been the local CBS affiliate choosing that. Um, no. It was everywhere? I, I, I don't know. I, you know, especially in the in the post-Billy Joel uh, fallout. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. All I know is, for example, there's a game today, 3 o'clock, paramount plus and i will press the button that has the logo on it like i i would i wouldn't know um well i, I, I knew there were games me, yesterday I but i didn't know I what so channel confused. they were on yeah i i, I wouldn't know paramount they, plus, you know it's, it's funny like when they people. list the global uh audiences they say here's how to watch in your area and it goes by country and there's 200 countries listed um, when it gets to the United States, it does say CBS. It doesn't say Paramount Plus. But I don't 
but I think that's just because CBS is producing the broadcast. And they're and they're they're trying to follow the inside the NBA model of chummy in their in their studio show. Oh, gotcha. Yes. And I don't know any of these people, and they're not funny. And maybe if I knew them, I know one of the four people on the show, and it just feels like I am I am watching a party of people that I don't know any of the people there and I'm not getting the joke. I'm with you there. It's a weird broadcast. But the guy doing, and I, I have no idea who the color analyst was. There was an American doing play-by-play. Mm. The color analyst was from England. Yeah. And Barcelona had a had two players playing yesterday who were teenagers. <laughs> they had yeah. a 17-year-old, you know, and a... I, I and but the seventeen year old made a play that was unreal, and yeah. the announcer in full accent goes, "The ball was attached to his foot like a foam is attached to a teenager's ear." And I, I'm just, uh, you're, you're on it. You're that. Thank you. That and it was a seventeen year old that made the play. I'm like that. That's yeah. that's brilliant. You may have written that down in case, but they, uh, I'm, I'm gonna let that slide. Well, I find I find the British announcers. As soon as a goal is scored, they have a poetic, dramatic line. Uh-huh. And it's almost like they take Sterling, John Sterling, and raise him six. Like they, 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 and, and they have to script them. There's no way their brains are. And the all whites are all right tonight. <laughs> right, right. They'll, yeah. they'll go, and the goal and the title is back within their grasp. Like it, it's just hysterical. Ian Dark calling U.S. men's yes. team games is my favorite. He's great. Yep. Yeah, he's great. Ian Dark was the all whites are all right tonight. Here we go. You are listening to Miller and Moulton exclusively on the Florida Sports Network. And now here's Mark Miller and David Moulton. It's that day and time. Our buddy Seth Everett, Sports with Friends Hall of Justice, two terrific podcasts. They have sponsors, listeners, and everything. I know. Follow him on X at Seth underscore Everett, Seth underscore Everett. By the way, Bob Harrig is his guest on Sports with Friends this week. You listen to the show, you know Bob. The we great have him all Bob the time. Harris. Yeah, the great, terrific Bob Herrick. He's writing for Sports Illustrated these days. Got a new Tiger Woods book. Yep. Okay. By the way, we'll have Mark Lye on the show coming up in about 35 minutes. But how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Bob was fun. Uh, we recorded it right the morning after the final round on, on Monday morning. And, uh, you know, all the pomp and circumstance. And, you know, I ask him the same question I ask everybody at the Masters. What is it that is so special? I want to know. Everything. Uh, everything. It's, I, it's from the minute you walk in, Seth, to the time you leave, the way you are treated. I don't know what you, you know, I, I make the comparison in the way to, to Disney World from a cleanliness standpoint. And it's Disney World times 100 from a cleanliness standpoint. Mm. It's Disney World times 100 from a friendliness standpoint from the staff. There's no place you are treated better as a patron of an event, of any event I've ever gone to. And it's not close. I've been lucky enough to go to Wimbledon. I've been to the World Series. I've been to Stanley Cup Finals. I've been to a lot of big-time sporting events as a, as a spectator. You guys have done it as media. I have to get tickets. I'm not really media. So, <laughs> But there's a difference. There's a difference of how you're treated sure. with a press pass to how you're treated with a ticket. Sure. And there is no place on earth that you're treated better than Augusta National. No place. Well. It, with his his you know every time I ask the question and I I don't ask it with a bias I I don't hate I don't have a a, a negative feeling to it, it just ah, I want to understand it and his response is you could tell how much harder it is to get a Masters ticket than it is to get a Super Bowl or an NBA Finals or a World Series ticket that it's that much harder so that the the people who get there have accomplished something it was it, it, it that, those are Bob's words not mine. What is interesting, it came out late yesterday afternoon, Masters ratings down over 20% from John Rahm's dominant victory last year. So if you're blaming it on, well, Scheffler won going away, well, John Rahm won going away. Yeah, I I didn't think Scheffler... 
Right. Scheffler wasn't a lock going into the final day. I mean, no. what do you have? A two stroke no. lead? No, he wasn't, wasn't a lock going, he wasn't a lock going into the back nine. Yeah. So you know, my whole thing with with it, and, and we get into I would say the last third of the podcast is this purgatory that golf is in with the PGA and the live and what's gonna happen and where is it gonna be. You know, last year around the Masters, we talked about this controversy and 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 there were live people who were offended by stuff that the PGA guys had said and, and what, what, what not. And now everybody seems to have quieted down and it's just kind of out there. And in this, you know, it, 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 so the question is, is it holding golf back? And Bob Herrick, just uh, I might as well just play the whole podcast here. Um, the but what Bob Herrick's point is, he says, amateur golf is at a fever pitch. Since COVID, amateur golf has skyrocketed. Yes. Professional golf is in this malaise, and it has to do with linear versus streaming. It has to do with where are these uh, matches going to be. The majors seem to be doing okay, but the PGA Tour and Live Golf have both seen steep declines. And we recorded this before those ratings had come out. Well, you talk about linear versus, you know, regular television, if you will, a very interesting story out of Chicago a few days ago. You know, we have discussed with you, Seth, for two years now, at least, the demise of the regional sports cable channel and Bally's and the impact it may have. It's having on Major League Baseball teams. And now this coming NBA slash NHL season ahead, it's probably really going to start to impact those leagues Well, one of the Bally Sports, uh, it's NBC Sports Chicago. Right. And it's, I think, going away because it's going to lose the rights to the Hawks and the Bulls and the White Sox here in, you know, the coming days. And those three franchises are talking about taking their games to a streaming service, Stadium, which is national. But Stadium has said, if we get these three Yeah, we're going to become a Chicago-based streaming company. Their offices are in Chicago. They're in the United Center, I believe. So is this – I mean, this would be big. This is Major League Baseball, NBA, NHL. It's Chicago teams. This is not Arizona, okay? I mean, is this then the future? Well, it's 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 the hybrid of the future and the present. What they all do is kind of what they've seen now where MLB has taken over the San Diego Padres, for example. And what they've done is they found local cable distributors to distribute the their their app, their their streaming games. So technically the Padres are streaming also, but if you have a cable subscription, you can still see the games. What I what I took away from what I was able to to ascertain from all of that that story when you sent it to me, the aspect of you are going to have to get an Apple TV or a Roku or a Fire Stick to watch the White Sox, I don't think is necessarily the case. There's going to be access to it. The only difference is Stadium will facilitate the profits, and that's it's great for Stadium. It it it, it they're a they're a startup company. You know, a lot of people, when they launched, compared them to DAZN. I love that name, DAZN, D-A-Z-N. You know, there's a lot of these apps that are trying to become major players. And you mentioned the NBA. The NBA this summer is going to announce that they're going to re-up with uh, TNT and they're going to re-up with ESPN, but they're also going to add a streaming partner, whether that's Apple, whether that's Amazon, that is going to change the way most games are seen because I think TNT and ESPN are going to do less games and more games are going to be prime exclusives or Apple TV exclusives. And we'll see what the younger NBA fandom does because we know the baseball people complain about it. What about the NBA? But what you're saying is with what stadium's doing, they'll probably try to have some sort of linear TV like the Padres have. Right. Who's going to be the first to jump all in? I mean, we've got MLS that's all in on Apple TV. That largely, I, we haven't been able to really get. You know, I don't know if that's worked for them. If it's been a, it's been a profit for them, but has it helped them significantly grow their game? 
So who's going to be the, what league? And it seems that you're onto something, Seth. The NBA is the youngest demo. Wouldn't you think it would be an NBA team that would finally bite the bullet and go streaming only? I'm going to give a shout out to a, a past Sports with Friends guest who I actually just ran into at the Prudential Center. Just We just had this conversation. We were talking about you know, the streaming and 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 all going all streaming. Uh, Eric Fisher from Front Office Sports, great, great reporter, um, and he covers all this stuff. The idea that you're going to make, you're going to take this off of linear. So what his analogy was is the six thirty network news show. You guys know what I'm talking about, Lester yeah, Holt and uh, sure. you know, right. whoever whoever it is, right? That show used to get. 25 to 30 million viewers a night. Right. And now it and gets you put, between six and nine. And, right. And you put all, and I'm not talking about the local affiliates. I'm not no, talking, no, no. About, talking the, about, no, CBS, NBC, network. ABC at 630 Eastern. Right. 630, that, their network show. That has more than been cut in half. So you'd say, wait a second, this is this is dying a slow death. Why would they put this on linear television? Just put it on an app. That, follow the logic. There are still eight to eleven million people watching these network shows. There's enough people who are loyal to the linear. And Billy Joel showed us this weekend because they all went on Twitter on Sunday night. And this idea that you're not going to cut off to answer Mark's question, you're not going to cut them off yet. This has got to be a situation where that number has to get a lot smaller, and it's just not there yet. You could say, you know, the, the network news, the audience has more than cut in half, but it's still a significant number. Curb Your Enthusiasm sent a uh, press release congratulating their finale, 1.1 million people. 1.1 million people. The Bachelor gets seven times that. The WNBA draft last night got two and a half times that. Yeah, that's right. And it, it, it's just, it, we're not there yet. There are still a huge chunk of people who watch this stuff on linear. The Billy Joel story, just for, as an example, that that concert was on Paramount+. Plus, and if I was watching that concert at the same time that anybody else was, I saw the concert in its entirety. But linear television, they those affiliates had to get to their news because that's how they make their money. They cut the, the they Heidi gamed it. Yeah. And they cut it during a uh, piano man. Right. And all that shows is the limitations that linear brings. Seth Everett, Sports with Friends Hall of Justice. We talked about sports with friends. What do you got for Hall of Justice? Hall of Justice this week. Oh, is Invincible. Uh, the television show that's on Amazon Prime, it's one of those creator-owned comic stories. A guy, uh, Robert Kirkman, who created The Walking Dead, he uh, he started his career writing for DC and Marvel, found out he didn't uh, own them, and uh, decided to create his own stuff, created Invincible. And an old pal of mine, uh, Robin Lundberg, joins me to talk about Invis Invincible. Robin and I used to work together at ESPN, and he went to SI and uh, recently has kind of started his own projects, and I welcomed him to the Hall of Justice. See, I'm glad you clarified that because I thought you were just saying, you know, Hall of Justice was invincible, kind of like, you know, oh, yeah. you know, giving it its own adjective. Good play on yeah. words. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, oh, wow. You're, that's what you think of Hall of Justice, huh? Invincible. How much you time know. do we have? Uh, you got a couple. Uh, we got about a minute and a half. Did you guys uh, watch the last five minutes of uh, Capitals Flyers last night? I had Capitals Flyers on one TV and Red Wings Canadians on another set. It was a tie game. The Flyers needed to win in regulation. They yep. couldn't go to overtime. So in a tie game, they pulled their goalie and the Capitals eliminated the Red Wings on an empty net goal. Yes, they did. Fantastic and, drama. Well, and as Mark pointed out earlier in the show, when we're pressed for time, there was a disputed goal, non-goal in the Flyers game. It took them three minutes to decide it. So even though the two games were at the same time, the Flyers game was running behind the Wings yes. game. If the games were going on at the same time, the Flyers would have known that the Wings had scored and forced overtime and they wouldn't have pulled their goalie. That's right. And then possibly the Wings and Penguins would still be alive today. That's right. Ah, it was fantastic drama. It, it was, and as a Wings fan, it crushed me, but it was exhilarating yeah. to watch. It really and truly was.
Yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. My kids were all in it. You know, we were just we were like on the edge of our seat. Really, a lot of fun. He's Seth Everett, Sports with Friends Hall of Justice. Follow him on X at Seth underscore Everett. Thanks, Seth. All the best. See ya. Hello, friends and family of Southwest Florida. Are you looking to tap into the electric vehicle market? Well, look no further because we here at Southwest Florida Golf Carts have just what you need. E-bikes, golf carts, LSVs, scooters, and more. Come down and talk with one of our experienced sales reps. Have a soda and a smile, and you could be cruising the streets in your new EV today. Stop by the store or visit our website at flgolfcarts.com and enter for a chance to win $100 off your next purchase by answering John's monthly sports question. Mark Miller for Molly Maid. Why Molly Maid, you ask? Trust. Molten was a customer for 15 years. Affordability. Didn't I just say Molten was a customer for 15 years? Worry-free services. Our professional house cleaners are fully insured and a 24-hour warranty. Call Molly Maids today at 239-774-5839. That's 239-774-5839 or online at mollymade.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. That's mollymade.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. The waterways of Naples are a beauty to behold. And the Bayfront Inn has multiple ways for guests to enjoy the water and have some fun. Gather your family and friends and enjoy a leisurely day on the water with a pontoon or deck boat. If you prefer to explore the waterways without a motor, the Bayfront has canoes, standboards, and kayaks. At the end of your journey, enjoy lunch or dinner at the Bamboo Tropical Bar and Grill. The Bayfront Inn. Something for everyone. On 5th Avenue in Naples. Located on the East Trail, locally owned Naples Tiki Bar and Grill is an outdoor eatery next to the Hitching Post Shopping Center. Island-inspired food with a true tiki theme. The best place in Naples to enjoy the beautiful weather in Southwest Florida. The Naples Tiki Bar and Grill offers a great menu for dine-in or takeout. Enjoy our famous pulled pork, huge burgers, and tiki bar cocktails. Don't miss happy hour every day from 3 to 6 and live music 7 days a week. See you soon at the Naples Tiki Bar and Grill, 11498 Tamiami Trail East. You are listening to Miller and Moore on the Florida Sports Network.
That was an exciting break. It was. It was <laughs> riveting. I was going to say, how you guys doing? In that was three, two, two, one. one. No? No. We got 15 seconds. Oh. Now 12. Let's pump the poll question. It's got a lot of votes. Interesting. Probably the most votes we've had on a poll question in a long time. Here we go. Good dog. You're listening to Miller and Moulton, only on the Florida Sports Network. And now, here's Mark Miller and David Moulton. 21 minutes past the hour. Friend of the show, Mark Lai. To join us, we'll talk a little golf. Masters ratings came in down over 20%. Mark did an interview earlier in the week. Uh, garnered a few headlines. Uh, we'll talk to Mark about golf and life and the pursuit of happiness. He's like the worst golfer in his family now. He's the guy who won on the PGA Tour. And uh, his son and daughter, are. I think they give him strokes now. Uh, it's, Can you ask your kids for strokes? <laughs> that's that's going to be I mean, our that's first my question. Lead question Mark right Lye. There. <laughs> I, I think his daughter's like you know damn near state champion in Florida. I mean she's really good playing out of Naples. So <laughs> that'll be our first question. We'll eventually ah uh, we'll get around to Scheffler. Who, by the way, Mark Lye singing the praises of Scotty Scheffler. How can you not? Uh, but we'll talk to Mark about golf and life and the pursuit of happiness in about 15 minutes' time. Our poll question, you know, I was worried that nobody would be interested in this question. Once again, showing that Miller and Moulton have a horrible feel and touch when it comes to poll questions. Because apparently people actually are finding this question interesting. They're voting on it, that's for certain, to, to the rate that we usually don't get votes on this show. So and the question is very simple. Do you think Trevor Bauer will ever play in the majors again? And right now, 70% of you do not think he will ever play Major League Baseball again. And the reason we ask the question is because Trevor Bauer, you may not have heard the news in the last 12 to 18 hours, the woman who accused Trevor Bauer of domestic violence and Bauer had always denied it and said, yes, you know, we had rougher sex than normal, but you know, uh, let me show you pictures and the texts and uh, you know, plus she asked, she wanted money from me. You know, she's, it, she's trying to take advantage of me. I'm the victim, not her. And most people didn't believe him. Although the authorities, two separate investigations, they never charged him either time. Major league baseball suspended him tried not to pay him, had to pay him most of his $105 million contract, and he hasn't pitched in the bigs in two years. Well, the woman in question was just charged by Arizona authorities yesterday for fraud and trying to extort someone in Arizona. Very similar sounding situation. And so... We wonder, does that now change things? And I don't think that it does simply because I think Major League Baseball doesn't like Trevor Bauer. They don't want him in their league. They didn't like him before. This gave him the excuse to boot him out of the league, and now no one's going to sign him. So this is not an Angel Cabrera situation, who was found guilty in a court of law in his native country, served two years in prison, and the Masters just very politely said, I know you're a former champion and you're out of jail. We really don't want you coming to the champion's dinner this year. And so the Masters said he had visa problems. Angel Cabrera's like, I got my visa right here. So we'll see if Angel Cabrera is at future champions dinners at Augusta. But so that's our question with Trevor Bauer. And, you know, that Mark Miller, the David Moulton, Miller underscore Moulton on X and vote accordingly. We would uh, appreciate it. So I'm trying to just temper my enthusiasm about the draft. I am. It's eight days. We got the NBA play-ins. We got the hockey. We're going to get lightning and Panthers. I'm so excited. You know, hoping my Rangers don't have a Boston Bruins-like first-round performance from last year where 
you know, you're the president trophies winner and you can't get out of the first round. I'm blaming the Bruins for the wings, not getting the playoffs. So I'm rooting for the Leafs in the first round. That's all I know. I want wow. the Leafs to take out the Bruins. And which things that you have never said ever in the 25 years I've known you, you've never rooted for the Leafs to ever win anything. No, I know. I, I, I have taken great pleasure in them blowing first round series, but I, and I don't think they'll beat Boston because it's Toronto and well, they don't win playoff series. David Mark said to me yesterday, he said, Trent, your disdain for Purdue is my disdain for Boston sports. So just did, if that puts it in perspective for I'm you. I'm curious. Did you have this disdain before the run in the 2000s when the Red Sox, the Boston sports fan, you know, pre-Patriots dynasty, pre the Red Sox winning four times? You know, remember the Celtics? No, I, no, I didn't. It, no, this was brought on by their fans. And you know I was a huge fan of what the Patriots were doing. Yes, you were. Absolutely. Because you I were. love greatness. Yeah, and you love Brady. Yeah, you're a Brady fan. Absolutely. You, you can't say that publicly because your wife's a Steelers fan. And and so and he went to Michigan. So there are a lot star. of reasons for yeah. me not to like Tom Brady. But right. you can't deny the man's greatness. Right. And I I loved I love watching greatness. But I, I am think, not a Boston sports teams fan because their fans drive me nuts. By the way, I'm curious, speaking to the Boston sports fan right now, how do you feel about Robert Kraft and his son? They are clearly going out of their way to slam Bill Belichick. They helped put this documentary together in which the sentiment was very anti-Bill. Now the story's coming out that Robert Kraft got on the phone and called the Falcons owner and said, yeah, don't hire him. Not trustworthy. And that Robert Kraft has kind of helped, you know, kind of helped keep Bill unemployed. Well, Bill never did anything for Mr. Kraft. I mean, you know, just <laughs> right. No, just no doubt about easy it. Easy to hold a grudge there. <laughs> Good gracious. I, I, I'm just curious that, you know, it just. Whether or not, and you can blame Bill for the current state of the franchise. I think you have to. We do. Yeah. Totally. Bill, the GM, did a horrible job for Bill, the coach. We've yeah. said it on the show countless times. Yeah. Bill, the GM, clearly needed to be fired. And if Bill, the coach, couldn't live with not being the GM, then yeah, absolutely. Got to go. So Bye. in a catch 22, how much accountability does Bob Kraft have to hold for that? For not getting rid of Bill sooner. If he knew he didn't want to move forward with Bill, why not rip the Band-Aid off? It went too long, and now there's a mess. But, you know, even getting away from the how it ended and who's to blame, the fact that Kraft is clearly, he's spending time and money to discredit Belichick. According to an ESPN story today, Kraft was the one that picked up the phone and called Arthur Blank and said, don't hire him. Really? So I, I just, just kind of curious how the Boston sports fan and how the sports fan feels about that. Okay, it ended badly, no doubt. And Belichick, I think, deserves more of the blame than Kraft. I do. But come on now, that's a pretty good marriage. It has 24, 25 year marriage. 20 years of it, really good. Look at our kids. Aren't they beautiful? Okay. Aren't they all well adjusted? Don't those Lombardis shine? I mean, look at them. Look at those grandkids. Okay. I mean, yeah, just how bad was this relationship? 21,000 is a text line. Would love to hear from you, Boston sports fan, on Robert Kraft not being as big of a Belichick fan today as he was. Well, what? I mean, he was up on the podium when Belichick retired and they hugged and kumbaya oh, and everything not, was wonderful. They, they, it was a forced handshake. I think even, I mean, you know, Mark, that had all the warmth about, you know, we had when we were being shown the door in the building that you're doing the studio in. I mean, it had that much. Now I'll be looking over my shoulder for the rest of the day. <laughs> right. There's no soundproofing in here. 
<laughs> they can hear everything. Every saying. damn word. So, by the way, those and in our Twitch chat room, they're like, Belichick will never get another job. Name the bet. Name the bet. He'll be working next year. Mark Lai is next. Hello, friends and family of Southwest Florida. Are you looking to tap into the electric vehicle market? Well, look no further because we here at Southwest Florida Golf Carts have just what you need. E-bikes, golf carts, LSBs, scooters, and more. Come down and talk with one of our experienced sales reps. Have a soda and a smile, and you could be cruising the streets in your new EV today. Stop by the store or visit our website at flgolfcarts.com and enter for a chance to win $100 off your next purchase by answering John's monthly sports question. Visit Jason and Todd at the Diamond District. When choosing something of high value and personal significance, such as a diamond, you want to shop with the best. And the mall is not the place to be. Here are my friends, Jason and Todd, with the Diamond District. Take a show in the mall, pop into a few joy stores, and you'll soon discover you're in the wrong place. Rings begin to look all like you're not finding GIA certified diamonds. You quickly realize you know more than a salesperson helping you, and all the same financing gets pushed on you. Visit Jason and me, and you'll find America's top bridal designers dealing exclusively with the Diamond District. You'll find the largest selection of GIA certified diamonds, all priced 8 to 10% over cost. You'll find educated sales consultants who have many years' experience and are not paid commissions. And you'll find Todd and me in the store nearly every day, wanting to shake your hand and welcome you to our Diamond District family. Visit Jason and Todd at the Diamond District. Mark Miller for Molly Man. Why Molly made, you ask? Trust. Molten was a customer for 15 years. Affordability. Didn't I just say Molten was a customer for 15 years? Worry-free services. Our professional house cleaners are fully insured and a 24-hour warranty. Call Molly Maids today at 239-774-5839. That's 239-774-5839 or online at mollymade.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. That's mollymade.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. You were listening to Miller and Molten on the Florida Sports Network. All right, way off of sports. Favorite restaurant, Fort Myers, Naples. Go. In three, two, one, go. All right, fine. You're no fun. Have you been to Z's Music? What is it called? Z's Music Cafe. Z's Music Kitchen in Naples? No. Seems interesting. I got an ad for it the other day. Ooh. It's like a bunch K- of live music. KG username. That's a that's a that's a that's a really interesting question right there. Oh, it's Boston, no doubt. Ohio State fans are annoying, but come on. Oh, they're really annoying. Yeah, but Boston fans, come on. Do you think Ohio State fans are more annoying than Michigan fans? Yes. Really? Well, Ohio. It's all, it's all in perspective. Michigan fan became annoying in the last two years because they've won. But Ohio State fans, they're the most one of those. They could be the most annoying fan and fan base in college sports. I think it must have changed hands a little bit in generations because I think Michigan fans my age insufferable, like just the worst. And I'm not. That's not because I'm a state guy. A part of it is, but no, most of it is. <laughs> they just, I'll I, tell you I mean... what, I want you to hold that thought. I need you to, when things get a little better for you, no, 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 hold that yeah. thought. And he, and, and I want to ask you that same question mid to late October when you're here for a football season. Cause okay. now, cause you, because you've been only around Michigan or Michigan state fans where you live, there are no other fans in Grand Rapids. You're right. I mean, the occasional Notre Dame fan. You know, there's a little bit of Notre Dame fan base there. So what you're saying is I'm going to catch the annoying but, wave of Scarlet. Oh, yeah. I got gotcha. you. I do miss Burger Q, Guillermo. And Ryan, I'm with you. I went to Harold Saturday. It was so damn good.
David, which fans can you not stand as a New uh, York fan? You know what? Um, I'm not, I don't know if there are many fan bases that like really bother me. You know, there are those that I will just, you know, acknowledge are more obnoxious than most, but. Okay. So who's number one on that list? Well, it, see, I'm a little more of a pro sports guy than a college sports guy. You know, if we're going college, uh, I mean, the Alabama fans gotten a look, you know, but they still take a back seat to the Ohio State fan. Which fan base do you guys think is annoying because, like, they're annoying for no reason, if that makes sense? Oh, like, Cowboy, they cowboy they fan. One. Oh, yeah. Cowboys, yeah. Cowboys, that's a good answer. Yeah, Cowboy fan is not accepting of reality. They they still act like they're the Landry, Jimmy Johnson Cowboys. And it's kind of like, guys, that was 25 plus years ago. Right, I wasn't born. You know, the, right. You had your 30-year run, but it's over. Um, I mean, over the last 14 years, the Houston Texans have done more. That was Michigan fan to me up until right a couple well, years ago. Exactly. You know, and it's funny. I actually have a fondness for the Yankees and a, and a lot of admiration for the Yankees. But th there are some Yankee fans that I've pulled aside over the years and gone, you guys are out of your mind. Yankee fan is a little can be a little insufferable and there's no doubt that red sox fan went from you know lovable loser to arrogant during their great run there you know i love the philly sports fan i do i do Lakers fans don't bother me, Ryan. I, I don't think Lakers fans are really a thing unless you're. I think that's a regional thing too. I think if we were out there, it would be they would be like. Oh, the, oh, yeah, Grant, you you gotta. Yeah, uh, that's a thing. You're listening to Miller and Moulton only on the Florida Sports Network. Twenty-two minutes until the top of the hour, till the Diamond District bonus hour, heard exclusively in the two three nine. Uh, maybe only for a little while longer, though. We're expanding Huntsville, Jacksonville, and I think Jacksonville's taking all four hours. So, you know, it may be exclusive not much longer. Mark Lie kind enough to join us once again. All uh, right, he he's not even the best. Here's a former PGA Tour pro for over twenty years, one on tour. The whole deal led the Masters going into Sunday. Not even the best golfer in his family anymore. In fact, may only be the third best. And and so, Mark, our first hard-hitting question, <laughs> do you ask your kids for strokes? No. Would uh, you ever ask them for strokes? Would I ever? No. <laughs> if, if, if we get to that point, daddy's going away. Uh, should but, should dog, it? My in fairness, in fairness, if we were your caddy before the first tee, would it be okay if we said you need to ask Lucas and Ava for strokes? Uh, if you were my caddy, I'd have I'd have you taken off the property. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in all seriousness, I, I will let you tote on your kids a little bit. How much fun is it watching their games progress? You played at the highest level. To watch them be aspiring golfers has to be just a, a ball. It really is. Uh, my daughter is really into it. My son is now in college, and uh, he's not going to play college golf. He's uh, more of a brainiac, but Looking at my daughter, I, I see a lot of similarities. I mean, I just could not wait when I was young to get in a golf tournament, and that's the way she is. Uh, they got washed out up at the Innisbrook the week after the uh, Valspar, and uh, th they watched the qualifier out, and my daughter had been working so hard for like a month just for this qualifier, and uh, they got turned down. They, they played two holes. They blew them off the golf course, and she moped for days because <laughs> I need to play and you know she's uh she's doing all the great things uh you know going to prom and going to school a lot of these a lot of these kids these days 
Mark and Dave are uh, they're homeschooling and they're playing in tournaments every chance they get. So uh, my daughter's unique in that she wants to be a girl and she wants to play golf too. And I think it's it's a great combination. In fact, just on Monday, the uh, two teams, uh, Community School of Naples and First Baptist Academy, did a thing for the Folds of Honor. They raised uh, twenty thousand three hundred eighty dollars. Uh, just by playing a match. How about that one? And gave it to Dan Rooney and the Folds of Honor. So, uh, you know, I think the the youth of today is coming back, I think. He's Mark Lye. You can follow him on X at Let It Fly, putting an F before Lye, L-Y-E. All right. Uh, Listen, we did not hear it live. We've seen and heard excerpts and how it was translated on X. On Monday, you did an interview on Dan Dockage's Outkick show, okay? Right. He brought up the subject, which is very rarely brought up in golf, about Tiger Woods and steroid rumors. What is it you said? Okay, first of all, he used the word steroids. Uh, and I just responded. It was... Kind of, you know, he had, uh, I had never met Dan before. He's a very talented guy. And uh, we talked, he says, man, Tiger looked awful. And I said, yeah, he, you know, he looks puffy. He looks like this. I said, you know, who knows what he's on. And he says, well, would you mind talking about that? And I said, no, I don't mind talking about it. Look, the thing is that I can be completely honest these days and not have a fear of getting fired. Okay. <laughs> Cause I, I used to work. got fired. Right. But, ah. I, I worked for golf channel for 18 years. I worked for uh, Sirius XM and I had to weigh my words and thinking, eh, I don't want them to get wrong ideas. You know, I might get a uh, talking to by HR or something like that, but I have got nothing to lose and nobody uh, is above, you know, getting, criticized these days but i guarantee you if the the subject on uh, on uh, enhancement of i just you look at tiger and you say man there's something not right you know i mean he looks bad right now he's only 48 years old looks like he's got one foot in the grave and the other on a banana peel you know walking around but the other the thing is in in the times maybe from 22 to 26 or 27, this kid, you know, he became a completely different animal. And I, I noticed it. Everybody noticed it, but they kept quiet about it. And they still keep quiet about, Oh, don't, don't say anything about tiger. They'll beat you up or his team will go ahead and, you know, uh, get you fired. And so people are afraid to mention that, but look, you'd have to be blind to not see the body change that tiger has gone through. So if it's performance enhancing drugs, or if it's something more, you know, violent than that in the way of taking stuff, I I would think that tiger, especially after this last deal, uh, would have to have some sort of enhancement. We already know he's addicted to pain pills. You know, I mean, that's just, that's a given. So, for me to say that, uh, I guess it kind of came out of nowhere, but it's something that I've known and thought for a long time. I mean, I don't know it verbatim, but look, we're around these guys all the time. And when something doesn't look right, you know, it's like, Ooh, man, you see how this guy looks? I don't know about what's going on, but that is exactly how we got on the conversation. And I guess it started some sort of firestorm, but uh, I don't know. What do you guys think? You've seen the guy all this time. Well, I, Mark, I thought it 15 years ago. I, I mean, there was rumors of it. There's always been rumors of it, but there's been never been any proof. And as you said, Tiger's untouchable on the tour. You can't say a critical word about him, particularly then when he was at the right. height of his game was even more difficult to try to take an anti tiger stance. So this is not the first time I've heard these rumors. It won't be the last time we've heard these rumors. No, I, and look, we're not criticizing. We're just, we just want to, you know, the obvious thing. And look, I, he's done. I mean, he's got to be done. You've you got to look at him. 
he's still got game, but it takes more than game to play these games. You ha- you, these days, you have to have stamina. Uh, you have to have it. And you know, look, Tiger has carried this game for a long time. I don't think he actually is done, done, but look, let's just not get to the masters and start talking tiger, 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 and then having Scotty Scheffler being the best player on the planet. All of a sudden we're still talking about tiger. It's just, it's just crazy to me. So sure. I, I, I stepped in it, didn't I? Um, by, by bringing up something that's pretty doggone obvious to everybody. And yet people can't believe that I would say something like that. And I'm just saying, what's wrong with it? Look, I'm a nobody. I've, I've been, I've done my stuff, and uh, I'm just saying something that I think everybody feels is pretty doggone obvious. Let's talk Scheffler. Uh, two Masters now at 27. There's only three guys who have done it younger. That was Jack Tiger and Seve. What is interesting, though, Mark, is that all his career wins are February, March, and April. For, for whatever reason. Don't know if it's the courses, the surface, what have you. But your thoughts on 27-year-old Scotty Scheffler. He's flat amazing. Um, I just... So the most unimpressive part of the game is where he is most impressing on me. And that is his chipping. You know, you think about the 300-yard drive or 320 or 330, you think about his footwork, you think about, you know, how good he is from tee to green. But folks, if you really want to get good at a game, you got to work on the parts that kind of like fall apart a little bit. Like if your long game all of a sudden, you know, abandons you, you have to be able to rely on the chipping. And I, for the life of me, can't remember him hitting a bad chip shot. And I've watched him a lot. And chipping is not easy. Dave and Mark, you guys play the game. Uh, We're playing, you know, off of surfaces that are razor sharp, like what they do at Augusta. I mean, there's a lot of green, but the grass is deep. It's really tight. And when I see him time after time chip it close on speedy, racy greens, it's like, wow. That's something that's like Jordan Spieth. It's like Tiger in his prime. It's like Phil in his prime. This guy's been doing it ever since. And it showed somebody pulled up on Twitter. The most important chip shot or shot of his life happened to be on the 72nd hole of some qualifier uh, to get yes. onto the PGA tour. And it, he up and down it. he put it about six inches from the hole and it was out of deep rough around the green. And he put it about six inches from the hole he now is able to play on the tour because of that one shot. So that pretty much sums it up in a, in a bottle right there. How good Scotty is under pressure around the greens. Are you stunned of how he keeps his balance with the right foot swinging out the way it does, Mark? Not to get too technical on golf, but I mean, I play the game. I've taken a bunch of lessons. They talk about balance and being steady and that right foot swinging all over the place. And he still hits the ball 310 damn yards. Makes me sick. I mean, you know, <laughs> just think all all the all the play all the perfect swingers out there saying, you know, all this time I've been trying to have a perfect swing. What I found out, you don't need to have a perfect swing. You just need to know where the ball is going. The ball doesn't know that you're falling all over like Nellie Bryles throwing a pitch. Remember that guy? <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow. Down. And, and so look, great pitcher, and Scotty Scheffler does it. You know, the only guy that ever did anything close to that was actually Greg Norman. Greg Norman had that right foot kind of sliding in and uh, and getting behind him, a lot like Scotty Scheffler. But Scotty looks like he's having some sort of fit out there, you know, <laughs> this feet. So don't try it at home. I know that people, you know, think, well, maybe I could do that. Or it's kind of like the Happy Gilmore thing, you know. I'm going to try and do that. It's not real, guys. You can't do it. You can't do what Happy Gilmore did. And you definitely can't do what Scotty Scheffler does. So (laughs) just keep both feet on the ground for now, and we'll look at him as an outlier. All right. We're pressed for time. Uh, Do you buy into it at all that the LIV guys are not as sharp 
because they only play 54 holes. Their events may not have the intensity of a PGA Tour event. Do you think the guys are not sharp when they come from LIV and play the majors? I'm not buying that at all. I mean, look, we didn't have any – LIV didn't have any – what, two in the top six or something like that, or two in the top 10 or three in the top 12. You know, I just don't buy it that they're not ready and they're not sharp because one year, I think it was two years ago, we had three in the top five that were from LID. So they didn't bring it up much then, did they? Uh, so it's just, this was a very tough week, guys. This is the hardest I've played. I've seen uh, Augusta National play. I think uh, rivals the time that... Uh, DJ Singh won. Uh, the wind was blowing. The heart, the course was icy, freezing. The wind was blowing, and uh, they let it get out of hand. I think the golf course was marginally unplayable on uh, Saturday. Uh, very quickly, Augusta indicating they're going to go along with the RNA and the USGA in two years and use the ball that's not going to fly as far. Are you in favor of that? No, not not at this point. Uh, I'm not in favor of it at all. Uh, I just, I think they're making the game harder <laughs> by doing all this stuff. And the game is plenty hard right now. He's Mark lie. You can follow him on X. He's not boring. You know that by listening to him, let it fly F before L Y E let it fly. Uh, Mark, uh, Thanks for your time, as always. All the best to your daughter, Ava, as she's trying to win state titles and all that she's doing. By the way, the end of her swing is very Michelle Wee-esque when she was that age. You know, it it must be nice to be 17 and flexible like that. I mean, I just look and I say, oh, my gosh, how does anyone ever do that? So, yeah, it's great. Youth is great. And, guys, I appreciate you uh, giving her a pop. I appreciate it. Mark, all the best. We'll talk soon. Okay. Thanks, guys. A pleasure. Mark Lye, kind enough to join us once again here on Miller and Moulton. Do you imagine getting a couple beers in him and letting him talk? <laughs> Maybe we should. That's how we should do our own coverage of the majors. The three of us. Man. At least our own if 19th he, hole. If he, would, if, he would, if he would just quit holding back when he comes on the show with us. I know. I and know. not say anything. Another boring interview with Mark Lye. <laughs> it's funny the interview that he did he was in california the early part of the week it's why we didn't have him on the show because that's too early in the morning for him so but he got out of bed to do that interview with uh, dan dockich so when i was texting him i go man some people roll out of bed grumpy you rolled out of bed flying so along the network have a great wednesday in the 239, we do this little thing called the Bonus Hour. It's presented by the Diamond District, and that's next on Miller & Moulton. The law firm of Michael F. Hornung specializes in criminal defense, DUI, personal injury, nursing home claims, and auto accidents. I'm a former prosecutor with over 34 years of experience. The information I know is information you need to know. If you've been arrested for a DUI, time is of the essence to maintain your driving privileges. Call the law firm of Michael F. Hornung for a free consultation. At the law firm of Michael F. Hornung, we are committed to excellence in your representation. Being a local attorney with local knowledge is clutch to the success of your case. For over 30 years, we have successfully represented the citizens of Southwest Florida. For a free consultation, call 239-437-0095. That's 239-437-0095. Our offices are conveniently located in Fort Myers. Visit online at mfh-law.com. Located on the East Trail, locally owned Naples Tiki Bar and Grill is an outdoor eatery next to the Hitching Post Shopping Center. Island-inspired food with a true tiki theme. The best place in Naples to enjoy the beautiful weather in Southwest Florida. The Naples Tiki Bar and Grill offers a great menu for dine-in or takeout. Enjoy our famous pulled pork, huge burgers, and tiki bar cocktails. Don't miss happy hour every day from 3 to 6 and live music 7 days a week. See you soon at the Naples Tiki Bar and Grill, 11498 Tamiami Trail East. Visit Jason and Todd at the Diamond District. 20 years ago, Jason and I had the idea for a jewelry store like no other. The vast selection of certified diamonds priced 8 to 12% over cost. 
a team of individuals who are educated, driven, and believe in cultivating relationships. Today, we have become one of the largest independent jewelry stores in the country. Todd and I love what we do and are in the store nearly every day, along with our GIA gemologist, master jewelers, custom designers, and non-commissioned diamond consultants, all of which we consider family. As direct diamond importers, we travel the world, forging relationships and sourcing diamonds. What we love most about our business is that we can call Southwest Florida our home. If selection, value, and comfort are important to you, give the Diamond District an opportunity. You won't find a better diamond buying experience. Todd and I look forward to shaking your hand and welcoming you to our Diamond District family. At the Diamond District. Mark Miller for Molly Maid. Why Molly Maid, you ask? Trust. Molten was a customer for 15 years. Affordability. Didn't I just say Molten was a customer for 15 years? Worry-free services. Our professional house cleaners are fully insured and a 24-hour warranty. Call Molly Maids today at 239-774-5839. That's 239-774-5839 or online at mollymade.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. That's mollymade.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. You are listening to Miller & Molten on the Florida Sports Network. So Caitlin Clark's jersey was the fastest selling jersey on Fanatics ever. Do you guys know who was previous? I'm uh, sorry. Trevor Lawrence. Yes, it was Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, I didn't even hear the question. So I that Tre- <laughs> Trevor Lawrence. <laughs> David, did you know that? Like, had you seen that already? Or were you I, guessing? I saw it. That's why. I... Okay. Gotcha. <clears throat> I never, I would have guessed a hundred guys before Trevor Lawrence. Although it does make sense. Coming out of Clemson, one of the Jags, regional fan base. Fifty five seconds. I'm just going to start doing that whenever there's a silence for longer than a minute. Although, Logic Man, the Flyers made us money, though, because Mark, a month ago at least, might have been longer, bet that they wouldn't make the playoffs. 
when they were in prime playoff position. They were like eight points clear of the playoffs. Yeah, that was a great call by you. Yeah, I also picked the Devils to make the playoffs, though. <laughs> okay, so let's... They got to get a goalie. Should have bet the Islanders. <laughs> that was the team that did it. Well, we made the mistake. We bet Lindy Ruff over Patrick Waugh. That's on us. Here we go. Listening to Miller and Moulton exclusively on the Florida Sports Network. And now here's Mark Miller and David Moulton. It is the Diamond District bonus hour on this hump day. Getting over it together. Hope your week's gone well. Hope it gets even better. MillerandMoulton.com, Miller underscore Moulton on X. And uh, you go to MillerandMoulton.com in case you miss any part of the show, like Kilo Stad, Mark, in our Twitch chat room. He said, my boss wanted to talk to me, and I missed the draft talk. What sucks more than that? Well, go to MillerMoulton.com. Ian Cummings, you know, about 90 minutes ago. Bada bing, bada boom. Our draft talk. There, done. And tell the boss, you got plenty of time to work. This is important. I may go back and listen to Ian Cummings again because he starts going through players so quickly. Deep dives. When I'm dumb enough to ask about interior offensive linemen and he's got, you know, third round guys coming at you. Right. Nine of them. We can get this guy in the first, this guy in the second, this guy in the third. Dolphins don't have a third, though. So it's like, whoa, okay. All right. You've got to love that, though, when a guy gets so immersed in one thing. I mean, it's the NFL draft. That means you've been watching college football. You've been crunching the numbers, as we like to say. And it's finally... What, a little over a week away? When your handle is IC underscore draft, <laughs> I mean, you're basically saying, I don't have a life, man. This right. is it. Unless, unless you live in Pittsburgh and you just like to drink cheap beer. That's the only other excuse for that handle. And you prefer it on draft and not in right. a bottle. Right. Ugh. That was such a good call by you earlier. It's all I think of every time. And we've had Ian on a bunch, and he is terrific. His, I mean... He has got this down. He is ready for the draft. Here's what I love about the draft. First off, everybody's right and everybody's wrong at the same time. Merrill Hodge, who, for what it's worth, even though he doesn't have a national platform anymore, Merrill Hodge has been more accurate than most about quarterbacks over the last 10 or so years. And... He thinks Drake May is going to get you fired. He just fired. Said, fired. He just said, fired. Drake said his May's... last game was embarrassing. His, his last yeah. game was an embarrassment. Yeah. He said he's not accurate and he's going to get you fired. Meanwhile, Ian Cummings has him as the number one prospect in the draft ahead of Caleb Williams, ahead of Marvin Harrison Jr., by the way. Okay. So Ian would be pounding the table, whether it's the Bears. And we know who the Bears are going to take. But Ian is, if he's the commanders, he's like, listen, we're going Drake May. We ain't going Daniels, okay? We ain't going McCarthy. Don't get any crazy idea. We're going Drake May. And for the record, I'm a Daniels guy. I believe you're a Daniels guy. Pat Kerwin is a Daniels guy. We are. So we're all going to sink or swim together here on this one. That's all I need, by the way. The three of you guys in sync. I'm... Say less. I'm a Daniels guy too. Then no, I go the other way. <laughs> just, just, I mean, come on. Listen, I, I would blame Miller and Moulton for dragging Kerwin into it. That's what you know. See, Kerwin gets a pass when he's associated with us. It's so like, well, you know, he talks to them twice a week. He's just feeling, you know, wanted to make them feel better. But Kerwin's also big on Penix. Yes, very, very big. big. On Penix. Mm-hmm. He would take them top half of the first round. He would, if he was the Vikings, he would not trade up. He would just take Penix at 11. Is there a team in particular that you think Penix fits really well with right now? I think Penix can play. What scared me about Penix was the Michigan game. I felt about him the way some may feel, and I'm not trying to compare him to any Alabama quarterbacks, but when your offensive line is graded out as the best offensive line in college football, you have two receivers who are going to go in the top 
12 picks in the draft. Who's this? Washington. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, and Penix, yeah. I mean, so Penix had the best O-line. Well, Odunzi's going to go in the top 10. I mean, just LSU's got the two receivers that I'm are sorry, probably going to go top Washington's 15. Washington's got two good receivers that are going to go. They did. The other kid's getting drafted. He is. He's a day two pick. But couldn't I just to play? I agree with you, but just to play devil's advocate, they, Michigan has NFL talent at corner. And in, and in, in, in that defensive backfield, well, so I, Mich- Michigan could set the record for number of players drafted. I will say there's not a ton of Michigan products in the top 50. I mean, they're going to get, a, you know, a ton of guys drafted, but well, no, they, what we found out is Michigan won because of their quarterback was so good. <laughs> apparently, which is amazing because he didn't throw the ball, right? He's going to go third overall. What in the hell? Don't you think at least ten percent of that or twenty percent of that is just because he went to Michigan and no, Tom Brady I, I, went I to don't. Michigan. No, Tom Brady went there and the no. Patriots. No, were like we like that guy. No, I think a lot of it's Jim Harbaugh. I think some of it's Harbaugh, who has a good track record, by the way. Remember Kaepernick? He was the one that put Kaepernick in over Alex Smith. He liked him. He advocated for drafting him in the second round, and then Alex Smith took him to the NFC Championship game and had him in first place in the conference and got banged up with a concussion and never started again for the Niners. So you guys don't think there's any Michigan bias? No. No. Because there wasn't, if there were a Michigan bias, we would have heard about it all year long. None of this started I, until the season was long over and we started getting into the intangibles. They weren't talking about McCarthy as a friend. I mean, if, if that were the case, they would have been talking about him in September. And that was never the way they talked about J.J. McCarthy. I, I, I get it. But with them winning the natty. Go ahead, David. The only You asked the question, the place where you think Penix would fit best. And, you know, you got to draw the line in the sand. You do the first half of the draft teams who obviously are not as good. And then there's a bunch of the quote unquote good teams. But I'll go with the top half of the first round. And Pat has mentioned this before. If Sean Payton wants a pocket quarterback, seven, eight yards behind center, getting rid of the ball quickly, being accurate, you know, so he could run the Drew Brees offense in Denver. Well, to me, that's either the Michigan quarterback or it's the Washington quarterback. And you may argue, well, Bo Nix completed 78% of his passes. Yeah, and 40% of them were behind the line of scrimmage. And that's not me being a jerk. No, that's the truth. Okay, so many of the passes that Bo Nix completed at Oregon, they don't run those plays on Sunday. So you would have to evaluate Bo Nix is a very difficult evaluation because what they're going to ask him to do on Sunday, he didn't do most of his college career. So Denver to me with Penix is interesting. There's no talk of Denver taking him at 12. But if you were to think about it, Sean Payton with Drew Brees and what he did in New Orleans, and we're not saying Penix is going to be another Brees, but just a pocket passer, accurate, get rid of it quickly. Pat has said they have the numbers. They're out there. Nobody took less sacks than Penix. Nobody got rid of it more quickly under pressure than Penix. Oh, by the way, he's got the strongest arm of all the quarterbacks. I mean, flat-footed, throw it 75 yards. Unless you're going to count Joe Milton, and Joe Milton to me is – Joe Milton gets you fired, I'll tell you that. But – so that one, Trent, interests me. If you're Denver, there's talk Vegas will take them at 13. That if – if of the team that in the top 15 that may just say, you know what, I love them, I'm taking them, the talk is the Raiders. Does Bo Nix get you fired, David? I – well, it would me be it would certainly have to get me drug tested because that means I drafted him and I wouldn't draft Bo Nix if you put a gun to my head. Where do you rank him in these quarterbacks? 37th. <laughs> okay. I so honestly this I'm Spencer I, I, Rattler or Bo Nix. I'm sorry, who? Spencer Rattler or Bo Nix. Oh my goodness, Spencer Rattler. And Rattler's gonna be a third round pick. Yeah, I'm not a Bo Nix guy. And I, obviously I could be very wrong here. Don't know what to tell you. 
Listen, I thought John, I didn't know Johnny Manziel was an addict. Okay, the Johnny Manziel I saw in college, I'm like, oh, I, I, that guy can play on Sundays. Yeah, wait. So Molten was a Johnny Manziel guy. Were you a Johnny Manziel guy? I Mark? was not. No, he was okay. not. Um, I, mean, I loved him as a collegiate player. I wouldn't have drafted him. And the reason that I said yes was because I saw what he did for the pocket, not the running around. He, The game-winning drive that put the game away against Alabama were three throws from the pocket, and they were three NFL throws. And I went, oh, that's an NFL quarterback. But that guy, you know, that's not who Cleveland drafted. By the way, Merrill Hodge said Johnny Manziel was a sixth-round pick. Sixth-round pick. Skip Bayless said he should be the number one pick of the draft. Oh, my God. Skip Bayless said he'd have a statue before LeBron would in Cleveland. Yes. So. I mean, he's, you know, we all have our, ooh, damn. Can I take that back? Damn, they record <laughs> this? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, we all got him. That's the beauty of getting on here every morning. You guys stick your necks out there, and sometimes there's a there's a sword. I was, But I was a Russell Wilson guy. Okay, in that draft, and that was the Andrew Luck draft, and ask Mark, I said Russell Wilson was the second best quarterback in the yep. draft. You were a Russell Wilson guy, you were a Dak Prescott guy, and that's I turned was. out to be right. Right. I mean, despite of where we think Dak is now, he was a day three pick, right? Yeah, he was fourth, fourth round. Fourth round yeah. pick. Right. Cleveland so, took like Cody Kessler when they could have taken Dak Prescott. Uh -huh. So my my Merrill Hodge litmus test for you guys, I'm just curious, what were your thoughts on Baker coming out? I th I thought it was a huge reach. Okay. What about Sam Darnold? Because he was the other guy, right? I mean, he was going to be the number one pick until the Baker stuff heated up, right? Yeah, I actually was not enamored with any of those quarter. I was probably most enamored with Lamar. I Listen, I was wrong about Josh Allen because I just said, you're completing 54% of your passes yep. at Wyoming. At Wyoming. Or, Okay, you and really it looked like we were both right heading into year three in Buffalo, by the way. Good. Yeah, until they, oh, by the way, until they got him digs. First two years without Diggs, take a look at his numbers. Not that great. You could also argue you guys are still right. I mean, he's flashy and but he's no, 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 no. no. I just, he's I a like top to... five quarterback in the league. No, 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 no. He hasn't won. And, and he's a top ten running back, which I mean, you know, so you got that going for him. So, All right, for fun, humor me. O three NBA draft. What did you guys think of? The top four there. Did anyone have any stock in Darko? I wasn't no, even just... working in this business. I have, I was working for a minor league hockey team for the love of God. I didn't care. <laughs> if but I, I had called, if I had called Mark up for an interview, because I was doing a local show then, Mark was doing the Everblades. If I had called Mark up for a local interview and said, Hey, let's talk the top of the NBA draft. Okay, who are you taking after LeBron? Mark would have said Tom Buckley. <laughs> 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 no, nah, I'd have probably gone Reggie Berg. Don't get okay. Yourself. Reggie Berg, Ryan Brindley. I mean, honestly, he just would have gone right down a list of Everblades. Would have been like, "What the are you talking about?" And then he would have said, "Wait a minute, I just saw Carmelo win Syracuse the title. All right, I'll take Melo." Miller or Moulton. Visit Jason and Todd at the Diamond District. Hi, I'm Jason, and I'm Todd with the Diamond District. I believe in complete transparency. If you're shopping for diamonds in Naples, you're paying too much. If you're shopping in the Cape or Fort Myers, you also won't see the selection you deserve to have. If you're online, there's no human connection, and you won't know if your diamond is beautiful or not until it shows up in the mail. Just because it's GI certified doesn't mean it's brilliant. There's so much more to a diamond than its cut, color, and clarity that makes it beautiful. Visit us at the Diamond District for a non-commissioned and educational present or buying blind from the internet. The Diamond District has the rarest diamonds from half carat to 10 carats. You won't find a bigger selection or better value. And you won't find a better buying experience. Jason and I are in the store nearly every day, and we look forward to shaking your hand and welcoming you to our Diamond District family. At the Diamond District. Mark Miller for Molly Maid. Why Molly Maid, you ask? Trust. Molten was a customer for 15 years. Affordability. Didn't I just say Molten was a customer for 15 years? Worry-free services. Our professional house cleaners are fully insured and a 24-hour warranty. Call Molly Maids today at 239-774-5839. That's 239-774-5839 or online at mollymade.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. That's mollymade.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. Hello, friends and family of Southwest Florida. 
Are you looking to tap into the electric vehicle market? Well, look no further because we here at Southwest Florida Golf Carts have just what you need. E-bikes, golf carts, LSVs, scooters, and more. Come down and talk with one of our experienced sales reps, have a soda and a smile, and you could be cruising the streets in your new EV today. Stop by the store or visit our website at flgolfcarts.com and enter for a chance to win $100 off your next purchase by answering John's monthly sports question. You are listening to Miller and Moore on the Florida Sports Network. No, I was not a Paxton Lynch guy. But, for example, you know, uh, 04 draft, Eli Phillip Roethlisberger. I was a Roethlisberger guy. And I remember because Gary had just started coming on uh, what was then my show. And he was like, really? I'm like, yeah, love his size. I saw, and because of Maction, I actually saw a bunch of his games late in the season. And I'm like, yeah, I love him. Will that conference ever produce another NFL starting quarterback? Whew. Probably, but. I know what you're saying, you know, now with the portal and then with the portal and just how bad, well, how bad that conference is that conference when Ben Roethlisberger played in, it was a good conference. You know, I mean, it was a good mid-major. Now it's the worst mid-major. The Mac. Yes. Plus if you're any decent, I mean, how could, how could a big boy not gobble you up quickly? Your only chance is to slip the other way. You know, some guy from Michigan doesn't get a start and goes to Western and ends up being, a lot better, but I, I don't see it. Like Gary loved Philip Rivers that year. Liked liked Eli a lot, but he loved Rivers. I, obviously, none of us are wrong. I mean, at least two of the three are going to the Hall of Fame, and Rivers is going to get real close. Do you think he should? No. Okay. Do you think he will? Yes, but it's going to take a long time. Like it may, it he might have to wait to veterans committee even. Like I think it's going to take a long time. Do you think Stafford gets in? Yes, he's got the numbers, and now he takes has a it, takes a, takes a while though. Will take a didn't... while. If he didn't have the Super Bowl, I think he'd have no Hell chance. No. None. But he's no, got none. His, because but, Stafford, see, the what's the difference between Matt Ryan and Matthew Stafford? The Super Bowl. And and the other guy had a 28 to 3 lead in the Super Bowl. Right. Right. I mean, because if Matt Ryan, if the Falcons win that game, take a look at Matt Ryan's resume. Well, I mean, yeah, you're right. Well, wow. I will say though, Stafford's best, like his best season, his numbers are very impressive. I, I you know, I mean, Listen, for what it's worth, you don't have to convince it to Mark and I. We were all on the Stafford train. 
while he was at Georgia, while we were interviewing him at the Super Bowl. We were Well, I was all... in Detroit. Yep. Love this toughness. I mean, he got the kicked out of him in Detroit. He Did is he with ever... the Rams, too. He's got to be. There's got to be a little part of him that looks at this line they built for golf, and he's like, where? What? Where has that been for me? What, what are you doing? I never had a Penesul. Right. Or a Frank Ragnow. All right, here we go. Welcome to the bonus hour, brought to you by Jason and Todd at the Diamond District. And now, here's Mark Miller and David Moulton. 21 minutes past the hour. Good, bad, and ugly. What's on tap? Today was the day when... Some final thoughts, a couple of bets, a sprinkle, a boost. It's all coming up in less than 20 minutes' time. A sprinkle and a boost, huh? Sprinkle and a boost. Yep. Hey, we talk about this more than most, and I know there's something you want to bring up. But So the Masters ratings came out yesterday. Just to put it in perspective, you know, especially in the 239, I mean, we're all in on the Masters. Right. We are the number one or number two market for golf in the country. Right. It's it's West Palm, it's Fort Myers, Naples, it's St. Pete. They're the right. three biggest markets for golf in the country every week. The Iowa South Carolina women's basketball game almost doubled Sunday at the Masters. Almost doubled it. Now, this is the highest rate of golf tournament of the year. Every year, it's the Masters. In fact, in terms of total, and if you go, well, you know, the LIV thing and what have you, okay, fine. How far back we want to go? Do you know the last time the Masters had a final round that attracted the viewership of Iowa, South Carolina women's basketball? Tiger in 01, and it's like tied. Phil's best win drew 16 million. I mean, you know, Trent, I don't know if you did it on air or off air, but the WNBA draft, by the way, two and a half million people watch the WNBA draft. Yeah, that's stunning to me. I, it's stunning. Do you know what the because best? Because we all knew who the first pick was going to be. Right, and she's the only one that most people are interested in. So if you did watch it, how long did you watch it for? She got drafted 10 minutes in. Yeah, I don't want to rain on the parade, but I, I agree with David. I think a lot of people tuned in just to hear her name called and see her, you know, see yeah, that but, moment. Because but, no, 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 they didn't. No. Because that number is over the time of the entire draft. Right. It peaked, it peaked. It peaked at a little over 3 million. It did 2.4 and change. Okay. Wow. That That's. Yes. Okay. By the way, 2.4 million, double the highest rated hockey game that aired on ABC last weekend. The WNBA draft Monday night on ESPN or ESPN2? I think it was ESPN. Did double the highest rated hockey game over the weekend on network television. And Trent had mentioned during the break and just wanted to bring it up on air. Fanatics sold more Caitlin Clark jerseys during the draft than they've ever sold anybody else's jersey ever anybody male female football basketball anybody the most jerseys they sold in a two-hour period of time was caitlin clark monday night this is a phenomenon what they're already putting they guaranteed what 10 Indiana Fever games are going to be televised nationally. Yep, at least. Well, 36 of their 40 games are going to be available, whether it's the CBS Sports Network, you, you, all the different outlets. 36 of their 40, anywhere in the country, there will be a way for you to watch her and them if you want to. And for context, last season, I believe the Indiana Fever had one that was available. And everybody, the ticket prices for the Indiana Fever games are being tripled. Okay. Vegas, who's the two time defending league champion, plays in a 12,000 seat arena, already moved the game to the 20,000 seat arena in town. How much pressure's on her to deliver now? Well, pretty decent amount. 
You could argue, and maybe it's because we're more aware now, but Mark, you know, you were 10, I was 14-ish. Okay, when Magic and Larry entered the NBA, it feels like Caitlin has more expectation on her than they had on them. I think because of just where we are as a society with okay. social media and in the way we cover sports, I think you you may be right. I sense even more pressure on Caitlin Clark than there was on Michael Jordan when he went to Chicago. If for no other reason, Michael was drafted third. And Ryan in our Twitch chat room wants to know if they sell her jersey in men's sizes. They sold out of every men's size except small. I don't know why, but double X, XL, large, medium. Yeah. They all sold out. Every male and female, every size they had but one sold out during the draft. That is absolutely nuts. It is. Uh huh. Yeah. It's, it's one thing for me to pull up at one of my daughter's sporting events and see a bunch of girls. Wearing Caitlin Clark jerseys. Right. That would be expected. And it's impressive. It really you know, is. But it, yes, you would go, oh, okay, yeah. You know, that's her that's her base. All right. But just to give you some numbers, you know, masters, you know, we think pretty highly of it. Big deal. We talked all last week, you know, we're gonna sit our butts down. You know, my wife asked me last week, and what are you doing? I go, I'm just telling you right now, 2.30 to 7.30 Sunday. I, there's nothing I will do for you unless you literally are having a medical emergency in front of me. I am watching the Masters. I shushed my mom and my wife during the Masters. Right. I'd had enough of them. Sunday dinner, had everything cooked, had everything ready ahead of time so we could sit down and eat while I watched the Masters. And even though the tournament was done, all I wanted to watch at that point was Vern to sign off a 16. Exactly. That's all that was left for me. Right. Keep it down because I want to hear what he says. And I finally turned around and went, shh, enough. You can go back outside. I'm watching the Masters, and I'm not going to turn it up full volume to blast you out of the room, but we're getting close. Tw nearly twice as many people watched Iowa, South Carolina women's basketball as watched the Masters. And there's only been one Masters this century that has had the viewership that Iowa, South Carolina women's basketball had. And that was Tiger Woods winning his fourth major in a row. I think it's important to bring this stuff up because it is so hard to wrap your mind around how much Caitlin Clark. We talked about it all season, but still somehow it's shocking to us that two and a half million people watch the WNBA I'm draft. I'm stunned that two and a half people watch the WNBA yeah, draft. I mean, that, I, I, the Caitlin before, Clark numbers I was starting to get because the progression was there, but that's that's unreal. The year before, the draft did five times less viewership. Five times less viewership. Quintuple? The, the last time the WNBA in any, a game, a draft, anything, the last time it had that many people pay attention to their product, they said it was on NBC in the early 2000s. It was a New York Liberty, and Lisa Leslie, I think, was playing on the Houston Comets. And it did like two and a half million people. And I wonder, and not to be a jerk, but I'm guessing it had a pretty good lead in. Well, and it had MB NBC, which was the network for the NBA then, that was pumping the heck out of it. And the early fever games are going to do staggering numbers. Yeah. And that's why she has to deliver in that league in some way, shape, or form. Because, put it this way, you going to watch, Trent? Yeah. I'll David, you going to watch early season WNBA ball? I said for a year now I'm going to watch her. And most of the men who text us and are in our Twitch chat room, they're like, nah, not going to be interested. Okay. Are you sure? There okay. are two and a half million other people that apparently are. And here's the thing. Them making it accessible to watch Indiana Fever games is a huge deal. Because it's easy. If I had, I'm, I'm broke. If I had to pay to watch Caitlin Clark, I probably wouldn't. But the fact that it's going to be on network television. One of the highlights of the WNBA draft, I didn't see. I Did you see the when she went backstage, the first hug she gave? Because she hugs her boyfriend. She hugs her parents. She goes up on stage. The first person she sees off stage was Jake from State Farm. It was absolutely fantastic. And he's wearing like a red suit. Yes. Like, I yes. He's wearing a State Farm. Right, but it's a suit. That yeah. was great. Yeah. 
Okay, real quick, humor me. Jewel Lloyd led the WNBA in scoring last year in 24.7 points per game. Brianna Stewart, probably a name more people know, 23. If I set the over-under for 18 a game for Caitlin Clark, would you take the over or the under? I'd take the under. I'm because I think she's going to be a better passer. Yes, that level. totally with you. I think she might lead the league in assists. But I'll go over. But she'll do it very late in the year. Hello, friends and family of Southwest Florida. Are you looking to tap into the electric vehicle market? Well, look no further because we here at Southwest Florida Golf Carts have just what you need. E-bikes, golf carts, LSBs, scooters, and more. Come down and talk with one of our experienced sales reps. Have a soda and a smile, and you could be cruising the streets in your new EV today. Stop by the store or visit our website at flgolfcarts.com and enter for a chance to win $100 off your next purchase by answering John's monthly sports question. Mark Miller for Molly May. Why Molly May, you ask? Trust. Molten was a customer for 15 years. Why Molly oh, May? Didn't I just say Molten was a customer for 15 years? Worry-free services. Our professional house cleaners are fully insured and a 24-hour warranty. Call Molly Maids today at 239-774-5839. That's 239-774-5839 or online at mollymade.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. That's mollymade.com slash F-T-M-Y-E-R-S. The law firm of Michael F. Hornung specializes in criminal defense, DUI, personal injury, nursing home claims, and auto accidents. I'm a former prosecutor with over 34 years of experience. The information I know is information you need to know. If you've been arrested for a DUI, time is of the essence to maintain your driving privileges. Call the law firm of Michael F. Hornung for a free consultation. At the law firm of Michael F. Hornung, we are committed to excellence in your representation. Being a local attorney with local knowledge is clutch to the success of your case. For over 30 years, we have successfully represented the citizens of Southwest Florida. For a free consultation, call 239-437-0095. That's 239-437-0095. Our offices are conveniently located in Fort Myers. Visit online at mfh-law.com. You are listening to Miller and Moore on the Florida Sports Network. Do you guys know who Stu Finer is? No. He's like the gambling. He used to do sports advisors. It was a show in the 90s, I guess. I don't know. He's he's with Barstool now. Okay. Not nothing in particular. He's just he's he gives up gambling picks all the time. He's full of energy. He's fun. Okay, thoughts on Phil Collins? The musician? Yeah. I'm an anti-Phil Collins guy. <laughs> I knew one of you would be. I didn't know who it would be. <laughs> Sue it. Soot. Sue Studio. <laughs> one of Letterman's best, funniest. Thing. That went on for months. Um. Yeah, In the Air Tonight's great song. Get it. I was never a Genesis guy. Their dumb videos annoyed me. So you don't like Peter Gabriel either? Love Peter Gabriel. That's early Genesis. Okay. That's when the, I don't even that those are two different bands. There's totally there's, different there's bands. Peter Gabriel Gen- Genesis and then there's Phil Collins Pop Genesis. Totally different bands. Love Peter Gabriel. I think so is an incredible album. Kind of like how there's Diamond Dave Van Halen and Sammy Hagar Van Halen. Yes. Different. But very different. I'll tell you what, though, Eddie changed also. Eddie did a lot yes. more experimenting with Sammy. Yeah. Okay. You know, what was the one album in which he was all about the... The stupid keyboard. Yeah. 
Well, even before that, too, like 1984. Yeah, the, the 1984, that's when it started for Eddie. That's when mm -hmm. too much cocaine let him think that he was playing the piano well. I, I don't know <laughs> what it was. Come on, jump is good. But, yeah, it's a lot of, it's so, a lot of keyboards. So, saw Foo Fighters. Oh. And they start, um, he starts going into this whole homage about being peace and kumbaya and one is this. And they're playing Imagine by, by Lennon. Okay, yeah. And I'm like. You know, I'm, you're almost going to tear up. He's being so poetic. What the hell is he? And they do imagine, but they sing jump. Effing hilarious. <laughs> Effing hilarious. <laughs> That's pretty good. By the way, it looks like uh, Belichick signed in with uh, Omaha Productions. Peyton Manning. Omaha, Omaha. We got to get Balachek on the show. <laughs> right after we get Peyton Manning on. Okay. If so like realistically, if you could get one coach or GM that you don't really think you could get on the show, like, you know, Nick, Nick Saban. He's a one name guy. Call back to yesterday's show. <laughs> David is David's hurt. still thinking over there. He, the gear, say, the gears are going. He, you know, he, he's either going to say something that's really poetic, or he's going to pull something out of his, you know what, and give us somebody from the seventies. And Whitey Herzog's well, no. dead, so it can't. I was going to say they have to be alive. So take them up. <laughs> you never saw those bumper stickers, Trent. Dig them up. Okay, dig them up in Alabama, oh. and they had a uh, Bears hat. Okay, it was dig him up. Well, I just hats. remember when was it the uh, Will Ferrell and uh, what's his face you know, from the Step Brothers and all the, the, the oh yeah, and right. they're, they're well get him he's dead dig him up dig him up I would go Belichick I would would you but, ask him the hard hitting questions I'd at no, no, no. I would, uh, Bill, I want an hour. <laughs> no, I do. I want an hour. At least a half hour. I do. Hey, we did an hour with Vern. All right, here we go. Well, it's easy. Welcome to the bonus hour, brought to you by Jason and Todd at the Diamond District. And now, here's Mark Miller and David Moulton. 22 minutes until the top of the hour, 16 until we're out of here. We are diving in to the NBA and the NHL playoffs the next couple days. Of course, we're also talking the NFL draft. I mean, you know, come on, that's a given. But, I mean, we're going to get the play-by-play uh, -play guy of the Orlando Magic. We'll get the pregame guy for the Miami Heat. Okay, we're going to have the Panthers, Lightning. I mean, we have got you covered the next couple days on this show. And we are fired up for all of the playoffs. And uh, tradition, unlike any other, the Miller and Moulton Draft Show will be back this year. Yes. And we're drinking. It is yep. a Twitch-only show. Yep. Twitch.tv slash Miller and Moulton. And, and we're doing it. Oh, yeah. We are doing this. Trent is going to see a side to us that he has never seen. This will be the closest we have to a road trip, buddy. No, nah, we'll, we'll have a road trip, Trent. Well, I will also say, I mean, Mark and my dad ran in the same circles in college. I know mutually a lot of Mark's buddies. If if it's anything like that, I'm I'm pretty excited. It's that, only it's talking about a guard from Oregon. <laughs> I mean, can you get any more exciting? No. A Big Ten guard? No. <laughs> exactly. A Big Ten go. Uh, the, the jokes this year are just going to be, oh man. So Bill Bender, who we have on the show all the time from the Sporting News, I'm on X yesterday, and I just see a column that he posted, ranking the quarterback rooms in the Big Ten. Well, I'm a Michigan State grad, and, and I, I'm curious because they got the four star kid to come with the quarterback. I'm like, I'm curious where they have my Spartans. 
And I start reading the teams and it's, you know, Oregon and it's USC. And I'm just going, what in the absolute hell is this? It's time for someone to take back this segment, if for no other reason than to stop David from talking about Meghan and Harry. Here's Mark Miller with Today Was the Day When. Big signing today, 1492. Columbus signs with Spain. Well, kind of, sort of. They sent him off to find the New Indies, or to find the Indies, and he was going to get 10% of all riches. Is this like Dave Winfield putting his Hall of Fame hat up for auction here? Yes, and exactly the Padres, right. And the Padres were the winning bidder, so that's why he's in the Hall of Fame as a Padre? 1860, English champ Tom Sayers and American John Heenan fight for two hours and 27 minutes to a draw when police stopped the fight. It was regarded as the first ever title fight. Wait. Two hours, 27 minutes they fought for, and the police stopped it, calling it a draw. No way, man. I honestly, I, yeah, draw? No, two and a half hours? Champ retains the titles, all I'm saying. 1951, Mickey Mantle made his debut, went one for four. 1961, this little incident in Cuba called the Bay of Pigs happened. Yeah, don't know who was responsible for that. That didn't go well. No, it really didn't. At all. I mean, that that's worse than some of the first-round draft pick quarterbacks that have been taken. I mean, it's a woo-wee. Man. 1964, the Ford Mustang makes its debut. That did work out pretty well. Man, always wanted a Mustang. Yeah. Always wanted a convertible Mustang. There's only two cars I ever wanted. Wanted a Mercedes. Okay, it's kind of like getting the American Express card when you were growing up. It's like, wow, I've actually amounted to something. All right. And then you find out, no, it's not that big a deal. But man, did I want a Mustang. What color, David? Red. Of course. (laughs) I wanted a sign on it in which the cops were like, we are pulling you over every four blocks. Jump all the way to 1999 for you Browns fans with the first overall pick. The Cleveland Browns select Tim Couch. Donovan McNabb went number two. And Game of Thrones premiered today in 2011. Did you guys watch it? I binged it at the end. Everybody was so into it. Yeah. I watched it probably the whole thing in the course of about a month. Okay. I liked it. Have One never... Time. Ooh, um, I'd give it pretty high numbers. It okay. was a, it was a lot better than I thought. Worthy it was of the be. hype, in other yeah, words. Yeah, it okay. was. I, I would give it an eight and a half. I've never watched a second of it. I haven't either, David. J J P Morgan, Harry Reisner, Don Kirshner, Born Salming, and Roddy Piper all born today. Boomer Esiason, sixty three. Jennifer Garner and Tony Baselli are 52, and Victoria Beckham's 50. What did I miss, David? Really big day today in 2002. The 10,000th episode of General Hospital. <laughs> okay. Let's, hey, all right. Do we really, do we have to discuss Luke and Laura? Okay. Do we have to discuss the people who have made appearances on this show? Demi Moore was on this show. Rick Springfield, for goodness sakes, was a star on this show. John Stamos, Jack Wagner, Ricky Martin was on this show. Elizabeth Taylor did a cameo on General Hospital. You can go GH if you want to, David. They they know that one by initials. Yeah. So uh, there's... They ended it like a year later, but uh, 10,000 episodes. You've heard folks elsewhere mock Florida is gonna Florida. Well, Mark Miller sees it differently. He calls it the good, the bad, and the ugly. What you got, Mark? Cal Clifford lives in Edmond, Oklahoma. All he has ever wanted since he was a toddler was a pet octopus. His family humored him with toy versions. But as Cal got older, it became clear that only one thing would do, the real thing. 
So his dad finally bit the bullet and worked with an aquarium and got Cal, the nine-year-old, his pet octopus. It's good enough for me. Did you have a pet you wanted always? If you've been an apartment kid, David, you couldn't have pets. Did you ever have, did you want a pet? Because you're not a pet person because you were in the apartments. But did you ever beg mom for a cat or a dog when you were younger? Or did no. mom lay, the, lay it down very early on in life yeah. that you weren't getting one? Mark, it was a benevolent dictatorship, and it was only benevolent on, like, Sunday afternoons. Okay? N- there was no chance. I did. It never entered my mind. All my friends, you know, wanted dogs and had dogs. And, and no. I, it never came out, out of my mouth, the idea of having a pet. We had a crayfish. Sixth grade science project, crayfish. I brought a crayfish home. My mother looked at me and said no. I, I literally, I, I, the one time I took her on as a kid and won, all right, I had Ali, the crayfish. And the reason I named him Ali was apparently this crayfish went underneath the little thing and another crayfish went underneath the little thing. And all of a sudden, 20 seconds later, okay, the little plastic top starts rattling. And next thing you know, it flips over and my crayfish had taken off all the legs and claws off the other crayfish and i thought see six Float grade, like a butterfly sting like a crayfish exactly that was like 1976 so even though i was a joe frazier fan i named the crayfish ali because he was heavy weight champion of the world at that time for the bad we go to north fort myers and john allison early saturday morning he entered a code to get into the island vista estates the gate wouldn't open So he decided to ram his car through the metal gate several times until the bars snapped and he was able to drive through and get home. When the leasing office confronted him about the damage, he drove away and headed to a church right next to his neighborhood. Deputies found him inside the church with his parents and arrested him at the church in front of mom and dad. The 42-year-old faces one count of criminal mischief. Finally, the ugly. We go to the gritty streets of Collier County where a 13-year-old was arrested after fleeing from Florida Highway Patrol in a Dodge Challenger Wednesday morning. Did I mention he was 13? Yep. The trooper initiated a traffic stop because he was failing to maintain a single lane on Immokalee Road. As the trooper approached, he took off. So he was placed under arrest for fleeing and eluding with no driver's license. 13. Taking the car out for a spin and got busted. I didn't get caught. And that's the good, the bad, and the ugly on today, April the 17th, 2024. If I did that at 13 and was caught. I well, if think, I got caught, my dad would have beat my ass. I think, he, would have, he, he would have hurt me. I think I literally would have been allowed out of the house like a year ago. My mother was into grounding. That would have been the longest grounding in like Western civilization if I had done that. My mother used to ground me a day per minute. I was late, Trent. Oh, think about that. A day a per minute, five minutes late, five day I, grounding. I tell you, I would have been horrible under that rule. I was grounded once in my life. My mother grounded me for a week. I nagged her so badly the first day of the grounding. She kicked me out of the house by two o'clock and told me just to get out of the house. That was the end of me being grounded. And you stole the car the car on the way out. <laughs> Trent, the most I ever yelled at my mother, okay, was she was on the phone. I had to be home at 5 o'clock. She was on the phone when I got home, and I had to show her my watch. And I got home at 4.58. She would not get off the phone. And I'm literally showing her my watch. I'm home on time. I'm home on time. She gets off the phone at 5.02. She looks at my watch, and she says, you're late. You're grounded. Okay? Anyway. Uh, 16 baseball games today because uh, the White Sox and Royals are playing a double dip. So everybody's playing today. Uh, Of the 16 games, 13 of them are in the afternoon, including a mighty nooner with the Marlins and the Giants. Rays are playing tonight, however. 6.50 is their new start time. 6.50 in St. Pete, Rays and Angels. Yankees trying to avoid this afternoon getting swept in Toronto. How about that? Uh, NBA, we got two games 
Eastern Conference play-ins. ESPN carrying them both tonight, 7 and 9.30. Heat and Sixers. Philly favored by five and a half. Who are you taking? I'll take Philly. Heat. Really, Ray Allen? Really? The, I'm also uh, watching that game with Felipe. I'll send you guys updates. Sixers unbeaten since Embiid has come back. 8-0, even though he's only played in uh, six of the eight. He's banged up. Um... He's always banged up. We'll but, see. Yeah. So uh, Hawks, Bulls, Chicago favorite at home by three and a half. Hawks. Hawks. I'll go Bulls. For one right. game, give me Trey Young. Give me DeMar DeRozan. NHL Lightning officially end their regular season tonight in a completely meaningless game against the Maple Leafs, and yet it's on TNT at 7 o'clock. I will say most all of these games now are meaningless. You know, Penguins, Islanders, Blues, Stars, uh, Oilers, Coyotes, last home game in Arizona for the Coyotes for now. Bettman's giving the owner five years, five years to secure the land and build an arena. They're keeping the name and they're giving them five years. And if he can pull it off, they're going to give him an expansion franchise. They are bending over backwards. He wants it. that market. Batman Batman looks at that market has always wanted Phoenix to work. It's the fifth largest market in the country right now. Not even sixth anymore. It's fifth. If you were running a league on paper, you sure you don't want to be in Phoenix? No, I, I I get it. I get all the reasons why. It's just failed miserably. Horribly. And nobody Community wants it. Community never them. embraced it. Not one area has embraced it. This has been a this has just been a terribly run organization from the word go, and they've never made any progress in the community. Yet Austin Matthews grew up there playing there. It's kind of like what's happened in Florida, Southwest Florida, Southeast Florida, Tampa area. We've got 30 years now of kids growing up as hockey fans playing hockey. The same things happened in Arizona at the youth level. It just hasn't transferred over to the NHL team. By the way, don't you think if you own the Arizona NHL franchise, you have to get your hands on Austin Matthews? Like, just blow the salary completely out of the water? Like, give him $18 million a year when the highest salary is like twelve. do Don't you have to let his agent know when he becomes a free agent, trust me, we're the highest bidder. No taxes, by the way, in our state, too. You're probably right, David. You're probably right. Although, I don't know if it ever works there. For what it's worth, to end the show, my dad texts me and says, I cannot wait for the Twitch NFL Draft show. I got your Uber if you go to Mills. So there you go. Eight days away. If you wear a Ray Allen Miami Heat jersey, you're fired. Miller and Moulton, we'll talk to you tomorrow. The law firm of Michael F. Hornung specializes in criminal defense, DUI, personal injury, nursing home claims, and auto accidents. I'm a former prosecutor with over 34 years